Ta da! Okay. Yes. Uh, what do you call mm -hmm. a grandfather clock? <laughs> a, a big clock that goes bong? An, an old timer. <laughs> of course. I make this joke because we are going to be watching the invasion of time. Yep. 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 Um, right, so. Spoilers. Spoilers! If you have not seen all of the new series, spoilers because we will probably. Most, Big ol' spoilers! We most likely will discuss it in this video because that's what we like to do. Yep. So if you haven't seen. Basically all we do. If you, if you haven't seen all the way from Rose to. Chibnall, fuck you, then... Yeah. yeah. Rose to resolution mm. of the series, because it's going to be... what a wild ride. Um, also, remember to comment if you, watching, think there is any episode from the new series that is worse than Hellbent, then let us know why and give us a paragraph. So we can defend it. Yeah, give us a conversation, give us an argument, give us a debate. So, so at the end of these Worst of Classic Who videos, we like to defend episodes against Hellbent. Yeah, because we like to encourage conversation and also not make it seem too one-sided because of our seething loathing <laughs> for Hellbent. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and of course the purpose of this Worst of Classic Who series is to see if there's any... Classic Who story that is worse than Hellbent. Mm. The um, only one that's come close so far was Warriors of the Deep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Dominators was pretty bad too. But it wasn't as no, it offensively was, bad. No, it was no, just it bad. It was just really, really tedious and boring. Yeah. Just like the one we're going to be defending in this video. Mm. Um, But yeah, Warriors was shite. Really, really, really bad. Mm -hmm. But not quite that bad. Yes. But only just a notch above, I'd say. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm inclined to agree. Yeah, um, and also if there is any story missing from this list here in Classic Who that thinks it should be on it, then let us know, um, and we will consider it. No stories from season one to five because I've seen all of that, and mm -hmm. none of those are going to be on this list. Well, no, they would be, but I've already seen them, and they're not worse than Hellbent. No, I'm agreeing. Yep. Um, Patreon. Dot com slash Genesis of Androzani. If you'd like to help us out and uh, what do we do? <laughs> Buy stuff to watch and react and review and yeah, stuff like this. Equipment to make us slightly yes. better. Yes. More bearable. Yes. So when we shout it doesn't like destroy your ears quite as much. Quite as much. Yeah. Still this is a professional yeah. mic and yet we still pick um, because we're So obviously like we're that. filming this way in advance, basically to give you guys a little story. Last night I was editing the Dominators uh, review and I, lo I lost about two hours of work because my computer is so shit that it, fr it froze and I lost all of it. And um, yeah, so saving up for a new computer is something that I've had in mind but it's a very expensive thing. Mm. So uh, yeah, any support is welcome. Yes, and also you get rewards on it. And again, we've been saying this ever since Patreon ad, but we will get round to adding more rewards mm -hmm. because you deserve it. Thank you so much to those of you who are already donating. Like, we appreciate it immensely. Made a big difference. Oh, God, yeah. Mm -hmm. It really, really has. Um, so thank you, guys. And also Twitter, if you'd like to follow... Bloody Twitter! <laughs> if you'd like to follow us on Twitter, you can. Um, I don't post much I did I did make one post recently um, uh, and it's like if you if you just want to name a story I can give you a hot take on what I think of it it's still there um, so give that a go and but but basically the main reason why we created a Twitter is so we can communicate with other youtubers because crossovers might be in the works who knows um, yes but yes follow us there and whatever do what you want um, anything else before we get into the invasion of time? Help us. Why? Because we're doing the worst of Doctor Who. Yes, and we don't know. I mean, look, to be fair, I... The last couple have been quite fun. I really liked Creature from the Pit. Same. And 
I was all right with Nightmare of Eden. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It was okay. Yeah. But the two before that were so bad. It's a roller coaster, man. Yeah. Yeah, because we've had like three all right ones and one really good one. Four really bad ones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's rough. Yeah. We suffer for our art. Um, yeah, so let's just hope that this is a colony in space and not a Worries of the Deep. I've heard, I've heard, because uh, I've read some comments about, you know, people looking at our list of stories that we're doing and yeah. telling us what they think of it, and they'll add it, you know, that they're looking forward to us watching it and reviewing it. I've heard that this one is like a bad Moffat story. That makes me want to vomit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it should be interesting. Let's begin. <laughs> <laughs> right. Here's the DVD. Um, this one is actually a Region 4, which is good, so we don't have to stress out about whether it's playable. Um, but, yeah, this is a Time Lord and a Sontaran story. Woo! Which sounds interesting. Um, and it's the Season 15 finale. Mm-hmm. And I know some things about this story because I've watched a lot of reviews of it, but I've never seen it, obviously. And, uh, yeah. Very... This story has a very mixed reaction. Yeah. Very divisive. That's what I could gather from... I've yeah. done a little bit of research. Like, well. this story is in the... I put in the same category as, like, an End of Time or Hellbent or... Right. One of those ones that are so divisive that, like, yeah. fans will love it or hate it. Mm. Or some will even have mixed feelings on it. Um, and because it's a six-parter, it's quite a big one, too. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. It looks interesting, but I'm just... It's one of those ones where I feel like you're gonna just have to watch it to find out. Yeah, absolutely. Because it could be absolute garbage, could it? but it could also be pretty good. Mm. So... Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> yeah, it's strange because I've listened to about ten reviews of this story, mm. and I still can't quite get it. There's no, like, I think like it's, general consensus at all. It's hard to say. Right. Because I've seen it on, like, underrated, overrated, worst, best, everything. Right. Hopefully we're in part of the best, Cap. Hopefully. Ooh, Star Wars again. Music's so cool. That actually looks really good. Really good for, like, mm. Doctor Who. Yeah, especially at a later end of the season as well. Yeah. Why does it sound like there's a lawnmower? I don't know, maybe it's just on standby or something. This is just a nitpick and a personal pet peeve, but I prefer Leela with brown eyes. I find, oh, yeah. I find she looks way cooler with brown eyes than blue. Yeah. Like she looks more like a savage, whereas with blue eyes she just kind of looks normal. Yeah. Like Leela's character... Is at, is at its best at the beginning mm, and yeah. progressively gets less interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, she's brilliant in season 14. Like, yeah. Face of Evil Robots to Death and Talents of Wing Chiang, mm. especially. Mm. And then Horror Fang Rock is the last one with the brown eyes, and then after that, it's downhill. Mm. The blue eyes are the turning point. Yeah. It's like. Because then you get. It's like Capaldi with his hood. Hoodie? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, Leela going blue is like when Capelli comes out with the guitar. This already feels a bit more like, in terms of the modern context of Finale, in terms of like, there's a big, yeah. big mystery sort of going, like, well, obviously... It, al it also, it also, speak of Moffat, feels like we've just jumped into the middle of a story. Yes, yes. Because I'm pretty sure, I was thinking, wait, maybe it, in the previous story they end off at something. Yeah. But I just realised that the previous story was fucking Underworld, where nothing happens. Right, yeah. So it can't be. Relative time, please, Which is also that Thank list. You. Those walls are giving me flashbacks to my end of year film. <laughs> that is, I'm pretty sure that's, like pieces of the cockpit yes, that was used in Nightmare of Eden. Report, Two years later. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting set design. Yeah. Feels a little bit thrown together. Commander Anderson speaking. 
And let's plot. Please establish Amber. I'm Amber. already confused. There's a. Yeah. It's been like two minutes. Canines less annoying when it's John Leeson, right? Yes. <laughs> he's still he's still pretty useless, but at least he's less annoying. Yes. Oh. I learned how a crazy fact the other day. What's that? Some of the Daleks in remembrance of the Daleks are voiced by John Leeson. Whoa! Like, was he voicing the Imperials? In He's one... credited for all the episodes. That's so dumb. And so, someone said, like, in the commentary, um, what if they had held off his voice until, like, a, like episode two or three, I think it was. And they thought that the person on inside the capsule was K9 instead of Davros. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great. <laughs> <laughs> Remembrance of the Daleks, and instead of Davros, it's Kane. I really don't know why this TARDIS sounds like a lawnmower. I think it's K9's ears whirring. Whatever it is, the sound levels are fucked. But then again, we can't talk. Whoa. What the hell? Swimming pool. Oh! This is the TARDIS, this is the one that bloody Matt Smith talks about all the yeah. time. Yeah, well we... it's when he got dunked in, when he was yeah. by the library, or in the library even. Yeah, well the swimming pool in the library. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm assuming these guys are on Gallifrey, and the Doctor's just landed on Gallifrey, but not coming out, and they've like, like six minutes in, and I'm already lost. Yeah, it's crazy. Explain! <laughs> Oh, these are going to be the Sontans. No, this is the Vardens. Oh. I think the Vardens are, like, exclusive to this story. I'm not sure. Right. I assume the Vardens might be outside Gallifrey? Like, scanning it or something? Well, maybe the... Yeah, maybe... Who knows? Because they promised the Doctor total control of the Gallifreyans. Right. That's weird. Why and how? Last time he was here was the Deadly Assassin. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Which was... Season 14. That's right, yeah. So one year yeah. before. Oh yeah, that's right. The Doctor's all edgy in this one. Oh. Oh. Ah! 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 What? That shot's when Clara sees him. In oh, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. That, that shot there. They, that's, that's the one. They cut those... Moffat. <laughs> is, is this a bad Moffat episode because Moffat is literally in it? <laughs> no, you're a very stupid machine, you dumb dog. Dogs are wonderful, by the way. I love dogs in real life, but that stupid tin dog I don't love. Can't wait for the Sarah Jane reaction. <laughs> I'm sure Elizabeth Sladen's charm will. I mean, I like K9 in School Reunion. Same, actually. He's probably like the only episode where I don't really. Because he's a non entity, really, yeah. in Journey's End. Yeah. yeah. Are we going to watch that terrible Australian spin off that they did? <laughs> Which one? There's a K9 film, a K9 series that was made in Australia. Really? Set in Sydney, I'm pretty sure. What the fuck? He's exhausting being edgy, and it's only been like, because we're like not even halfway through episode one out of six. Fuck this. I had a feeling like the most interesting ones on this list was going to be the Gallifrey ones, like Ark Infinity. Yeah. And this. See, the thing is, I love Gallifrey in politics. It's just sometimes it is a shambles. Even in the classic series, I will admit. But Oh, that's right, that's Prison Barusa. Yeah, I mean, all Gallifrey stories are pretty divisive. Mm. 
even the popular ones. The thing is, I also no, no like sometimes stories like the thing is, let me put it this way. Here we go. Let me put it this way. I love the Daleks and the Cybermen, but not every one of their stories is great. No. <laughs> this needs thought. I mean, closing time and the Asylum the of the Daleks happened within a few episodes of each other. So yeah, Tom Baker's being angry. Which sucks all the fun out. Because when it's a serious, staunch characters around the fourth Doctor... The thing is, though, he's... He's like... He's got this kind of tone in the Seeds of Doom, but it always feels earned. Mm. Maybe... I, I get what they're kind of doing is... He's got this bit of a mystery. He's clearly working for the Vardens. And also he has a resentment for Gallifrey as well, which is obvious, but... Yeah. But it just feels very odd. Yeah. How he's suddenly, like, snapping. And, like, yes, because Tennant would do that a lot, but, I don't know. It's weird to see Tom Baker's doctor like this. Yeah. He doesn't seem like that kind that kind of character you know no I don't know how to say it he doesn't seem his that doctor his doctor does have angry and passionate elements but that comes underneath this sort of alien otherworldly quality but then again given that this is his home yeah. world this is his actual personality this is the true doctor coming out so yeah. I could see that argument yeah but I don't know he just because before it was passion, but th in this, he feels like a dick, almost. Yeah, no, he is. He's being a dick. Yeah. yeah. And it's come, like, almost out of nowhere. And it's relying on past stories. Yeah. Rather than, t like, building it up. Six parts. Pretty sure if you include all the duration together, the end of time is the same length as the six part. Maybe fifteen minutes shorter. Yeah. It's like a first doctor line. Yeah. Like a gold Lamborghini and a hundred green M and M's. Do it now. Anyone for knitting? Yeah. Oh, this is Barusa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But played by Michael Goff in the next one, right? Now yes. Infinity. Yes. Well, actually, oh no, yeah, sorry, because Ark of Infinity is before Five Doctors. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they don't go back to Gallifrey for another five seasons yes. after this. That's good. But then again, series four, series nine. Oh, David the Doctor, though. Yeah. Kind of. Yes. No, that that is a fair statement, but Gallifrey in... They don't have a proper Gallifrey story. No. Yeah. Gallifrey is the the goal, the aim. Yeah. But it's not what the story, act, the action of the story revolves around, mm. necessarily. That would be like saying the three Doctors is a Gallifrey story, because it's not. She's speaking more posh. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Development. <laughs> What's going on? He's, is... he's, he's decided to take up his uh, thingy. Yeah. It's weird structure. It's almost like the Doctor is the villain plot. Mm, well, that's he's gone. The, the th I think obviously I have a feeling it's going to be a ruse, obviously. But I think it's supposed to seem like the Doctor's finally gone mad with power. Yeah, but that's kind of what happens in Hellbent. I was going to say that, yeah. yeah. Was, that was running through my head, but I didn't want to compare it. Like, this episode is... But... At least this is focusing on Gallifrey. Yeah, that's true. He's not going... Granted, that's not my only issue with Hellbent, contrary to popular opinion. I have many, 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 many issues beyond that. It's just the most interesting thing in Hellbent is the Gallifrey stuff. And it's only really in the first 20 minutes and it's badly used. Yes, underused. And 
that's shrouded in moth hat. Bleh, bleh. Time Lords of Dex. If this isn't a character or plot building thing, if that was just supposed to be a joke, that went on way too long. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, I've seen this story. I've seen this story. How long ago? A couple years ago, I think. I distinctly remember that music. Yeah. Interesting. Maybe I didn't see all six parts. Maybe I got bored, but we'll see. <laughs> So what is going on here? Is this is like his induction or something? Yeah, his his inauguration inaugural inauguration ceremony. See, this shit interests me. I love the Gallifreyan hierarchy, mm. so I'm perking up now. <laughs> Would you like to go into the Matrix and do that all again? <laughs> I like this. I like the politics. Mm. Imagine this with a modern budget, like a Game of Thrones-sized hall. Yeah. Like, picture the High Sparrow. Yeah. Like, when he was Jonathan doing his... Jonathan Price. Oh, yeah. Timothy Dalton, Donald Sumter. Mm. Just having a chat. But, like, a debate, and then you have them in this... Oh, man. This, with a modern budget, could, would look... Yeah. I mean, this looks pretty great, despite its dated elements. This is one thing that... I love about End of Time is that Murray Gold and the Time Lords go well, so mm. well together. There's that. There's an air of flamboyance to the Time Lords. The yeah. only time there hasn't been was uh, War Games. Yeah. But, Everything since then has been flamboyant. Oh yeah. oh yeah, but War Games is perfect. <laughs> it is. And that sort of prehistoric Time Lord, when like lore in the War Games is so mm. interesting. Oh yeah. It was like before it got political and yeah. they were literally just gods. Yes. Do you swear to uphold the laws of Gallifrey? No. That's right. Do you swear to follow in the wisdom of Rassilon? No, I'm going to hold a gun to him. The story should have just started with this scene. Yeah. This has all just been like the cold open. Yeah. All right. Very it got really interesting in the last like four minutes. Yeah. The rest of it was all rambling. Very strange episode. Yeah. Odd. Mm-hmm. Odd, odd, odd. Yeah, the Doctor is very off. I think that's very deliberate though. Yeah. But not, like, not... He's a different kind of off though. Yeah. I'm really unsure. I'm quite, I'm quite. If it goes more in like a very, like, picture House of Cards on Gallifrey. Mm. British House of Cards, not, um, Spacey. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I've been mean, fucking, so much could happen. No, anything. Because... That was just... Yeah. That was just introducing the story, really. Absolutely. Like, as we said, that could have been the cold open. Yeah. Like, you could have plonked us, Doctor arrives on Gallifrey, greeted to the ceremony, gets the crown, boom, yeah. we're in. Like, we haven't got to time or the invasion. No. <laughs> that, really? is, that is quite a Doctor Who thing. Yeah. To be crowned and then have your crown attack you. He kind of looks like Julius Caesar. Yeah, he also looks a little bit like Richard... Specifically, David Tennant's version of Richard II. Right. Very close. He has little strength. I really don't like the Vardens' voices. Mm, very generic, yeah. They're not even, like, hamming it up. It's just two dudes have, having a conversation. Mm-hmm. Sound like Chibnall characters. Yeah. Interesting thing is there's very few doctors who actually would have even for a mission accepted this role because like the third doctor would have said no because he's so anti-bureaucracy yeah 
and the first two wouldn't have because they were running. Mm. The fifth does just to screw with them and then buggers off. Yeah. Six would in a heartbeat. Yeah, but he would. <laughs> and he he just would immediately re- screw them over. Yeah. And then the seventh would do it, but he would be like, mm-hmm, "Subtle about look it." What I can do with this power? I don't think the eighth would. And anyone from like Eccleston onwards wouldn't. No. This is very flimsy, isn't it? I swear every time we watch one of these stories, we get another reference to something from Russell or Stevens. Specific, usually it comes back to John Sims' master. Yeah, yeah, because Colony in Space was Utopia. Yeah. Um, and Creature from the Pet. What happened in Creature from the Pet? It was. Oh, Journey's End. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. With the towing. Yeah. And. Um, mm. Leisure High was Lazarus Experiment. Mm. I love that coat. Mm. Genuine, I know this is blasphemous, but I genuinely think the scarf kind of ruined that look. Because I love that coat and those boots and that shirt by themselves. Yeah. It's like how the, um... The coat, not the coat, the sort of cape thing, the cape jacket ruins the blue suit. Yeah, where well, I love it, and it's iconic, but it... The, the cape jacket works best with the non-blue suit, the, with the yeah. brown suit, yeah. This episode's just filled with unpleasant noises. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that's nice. He's well, like, even the Sonic Screwdriver won't get me out of this one. Oh, thank God. He might, I probably won't see it again for the rest of the story, which is good. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of keys in that picture. This is very Moffat, isn't it? This is something Capaldi would be doing in his TARDIS with his guitar. Hmm. I command you to open and kicks it and says, please, that's very... So there's this big old mystery and weird clothes and attempts at quirky humour. And the story began right in the middle. Yeah. And the Doctor's weirdly very not the Doctor. Mm. And it's overall quite confusing. Oh, this might be the shot. Do you know what that reminds me of? What? It's like when you get a game, like a video game. And there's unlockable doorways, but yes. they're contained, like they're covered in. Yeah. yeah. I hate the implication in name of the doctor. I hate the implication that Clara is every companion. Yeah. Fuck that idea. So hard with a rusty fork. Yeah. <laughs> Yet somehow overall that episode's quite enjoyable. I like that episode. But I hate that idea. Yeah. So before I forget, um, in the Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets game, there is this spell called Scourge. Yes. That gets rid of ectoplasm. Yes. Yes. And it reminded me of that. Ah. Why is Leela following the Doctor? Why doesn't she just say his name? Because he's been acting weird. Ah, okay. So she's stalking. Yeah, because she wants to see what he's up to. Right, okay. Maybe the intention was that this is the the fourth doctor when he just goes too mad yeah. maybe that was the intention mm-hmm. not necessarily a bad idea yeah well because I like when the doctor is pushed to his limits except for hellbent 
it, Hellbent has, genuinely has some good ideas, it's just that it fucks all of them up. Yeah. Literally, I have nothing nice to say about that story. Like, the, not Looks the... Looks pretty good. No, the direction and the music, yes, but in terms of the story in itself. In terms of Moffat's contribution, yeah. yeah. It's garbage. The, the best parts in the story are stuff that would normally bother me in a good story. Yeah. Like a good Moffat story. Yeah. <laughs> like the, the, the like pretentious emotional bits. Like 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 when Clara is saying to the doctor, like, oh, look how far we've come, you know, that stuff is the better parts of Hellbent, but they would be the worst parts of other stories. Yep. <laughs> Who the fuck did the audio for this? It's all yeah. It's horrible. And I don't mean the score, I mean the audio. The mixing. Yeah. Oh, fuck off you arrogant little prick. You are the most insufferably arrogant, overbearing, patronizing being tip. Nothing. Someone once said that to me once. Direction after several people have sent out the battery. That noise! That noise! I'm not sure if the mic's picking it up, but if it is, I'm so sorry. Why are the chairs so colourful. I totally thought that was, um... Oh, it's Nicola Bryant. No. It's not. But for a split second, just it looked like a... Oof. That is bad. Yes, I have them. Clearance is authorised. This is a very... This is a very, very nitpicky production. I feel like it's going to be those, one of those ones that could have been done in three episodes. <laughs> There's a weird tone to this episode. Yeah. It's like it was written as a comedy and directed as a drama. If that makes sense. Yeah. It's happening. You're right. What? It's some weird tone shift going on mm -hmm. here. I'm also waiting for the episode to do something. It looks like a kid's, like, you know, like, yeah. daycare center. This room is really interesting. Yeah. The rest of the design's weird, but this is actually very cool. What the hell? Hey! Did they actually borrow stuff from like a kid's daycare center? Like I get it's supposed to be like a crystal or something, but that just looks like plastic. <laughs> you know like those those things you, you bought as a kid, it's like grow your own diamond. But it's just it's just like, I don't know, um What's with the chairs? This is a mess. Two episodes in. <laughs> and we've already reached that point. <sighs> it's really hard going from Creature from the Pit, which looked amazing, to yeah. this. Oh shit, this is like a Moffat script. When Dudley falls into the snake, the snake pit. Yeah. <laughs> Way back to the cool spaceships. Those, these look great. They're awesome. But the the models are rad. But the fucking inside shots look so bad. Oh, they shot this bit in film randomly. Ooh. I love the look of BBC film from the yeah, from the sixties up. It would be interesting to see like what would have happened had it all of Classic Who been done on film. Had they had the budget to shoot it all on film and not on tape, it yeah. would have been real interesting. I mean, if... Because it adds the sort of gritty, real yeah, feel. that's what I love about Spearhead from Space, because the whole thing is on mm. film. And Inferno. A lot of Inferno is yeah. on film. Um, yeah. 
it's got this like this looks so much better than anything else that's come film is beautiful yeah. this is crap yeah crap yeah video yeah but film is expensive yeah absolutely I, they just couldn't have afforded it I understand that but fuck it's so much better what the hell cellophane what the hell is going on here? Next episode. Why is he so evil? Who knows? Who knows? I'm just going straight to the next episode. I've got nothing to say. <laughs> God. This is... This is weird. It actually said in the subtitles, laughing evilly. Yep. I can't wait till we're done with the worst of Classic Who. Yeah, because then we never have to do it again. No, ever, and we ever, can just ever, look ever, at the, br the brilliant stuff that Doctor Who does. <laughs> oh. That's what that fucking noise is. Now, I was going to say that... It, if the, one of the problems with film is it's a lot harder to do CGI. Yeah. But I don't think it would have really made a difference. Nope. <laughs> I think the problem with the Doctor is the intention, like you said with a lot of the Gallifrey story, the intention is really cool. It's this awesome idea. It's a good conceit. It's just so over the top. Yeah, they... Yeah. Like, the, again, if it was shot on film, it'd look better. Like, like... Are these the Vardens? The funny thing is, is that straight after this, the next season, they have another plot, season what long, about a key. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all a matter of time as well. Apparently, apparently Bob Holmes hated the key to time. Ooh. Interesting. Hated it. That's why, in the robot's operation, he takes the piss out of it. Right. And that's why I know it because I've seen the first two episodes of it. Yeah. And like the the Rivals Operation story itself is great. It's just the bit where he's introduced to the White Guardian. It's so bland. <laughs> it's just like I'm the White Guardian. Watch out for the Black Guardian. <laughs> oh yes, that's right. Yes. You yes. must collect six keys across this season. He's like a and video at game. the end you will have all the keys. He speaks like a video game NPC in an RPG. Yeah. It just it's it's like a really shit version of Whoa! Capelli's title sequence. Oh well, shit, yeah. Who's gonna sit in those chairs? Babies. So the key to time, it's like a really shit version of Thanos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like the Horcruxes. Mm, where it's, well, shit. But it's just so... There's nothing interesting about it. It's no. just so generic. It's the most generic run around yeah. like thingy. And the finale of that one is on this list. Oh, so, yeah. That thing, that bust, that statue in the background is way more interesting than anything being said. Mm. So, what are you going to do? But this. Grr. It says this story has one of the most unbalanced color schemes I've ever seen. It's ugly. It's, it is an ugly episode. It's worse. I think it's worse than New Earth. Oh god, yeah. I think it's. I think it might be even worse than the Invisible Enemy. I think it's worse than the Leisure Hive in terms of the way yeah. it looks. Because the Leisure Hive was garish, but at least it was like cohesively garish because like this stuff looks great but then other stuff will look shit all the exterior and film shots are, are rad 
And some of the designs look awesome, but they're clashed by other ones. Yeah. Like that statue and the gears. Yeah. Both individually look great, but together look so weird. Especially with the placement. There should have been a whole scene in there. You didn't need that, hey, we can rest over there. That dialogue they can talk about it being so natural. Colony in space. Um, uh, Bits and pieces I like. It's a lot of cool ideas. Yeah. Like a Moffat script. Yeah. He looks like Brendan Gleeson. Mm. You can't survive out here without you. <laughs> Harry Potter! I can survive. Harry Potter! The Cruciato Curse. I thought I could have it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do you like that? <laughs> oh man. Is this guy going to regenerate into David Tennant? I was just thinking that. Oh. <laughs> Barty Crouch. Junior. Oh, ecstasy. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so so these guys are live in a savage environment yeah. where they have to hunt and fight and eat and yes. live in a sort of survival. Whereas the Time Lord Society lives off like mechanics and politics. Well, and it's it's like it's kind of like a class divide thing as well because yeah. they're all Gallifreyans so, yeah, so but that, there's so the that, time that little case you had in there that's like one of those it's like magic pill everything yeah. you need in your diet happy want some happy yeah in a severely underrated episode mm -hmm. gridlock is great yes much better than this <laughs> gridlock's much better than most things yep pretty it's much. fantastic yeah can't argue with that fucking great I cannot wait to get to it with Jake yep if he hates it, I'm gonna fight him. <laughs> Physically? Yes, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna I'm gonna lunge across the room. Go, you're gonna go Tom Baker invasion and time on. Yes. Get out! Get out! <laughs> no, now! I mean it! <laughs> Their voices are so underwhelming. So they have shit voices, shit CGI. So it's, it's a practical effect and a CGI at the same time because it's a bit of tin foil. It's an, it's an overlaid image, yeah. It's an overlaid image of a bit of tin foil. Or cellophane or something. Yeah. Granted, it probably wasn't as like widely used in the 70s as it is now, but still, it's not a particularly great design conceptually either. Yeah. But I would say that these villains, the Vardens, are in the same class as the Dominators. But the Dominators were hilarious. That's true. That's true. You dare defy a Dominator? It's just visually pathetic. It is. I think I might side with Lord Slar on this one, and not, not um, not the Defenders. <laughs> He did a ranking of Somtaran stories. Yeah. And this was dead last. Ooh. Like he. Oh fuck! I forgot this was a Somtaran story. Yeah. Because he hate he doesn't like Somtaran strategy. Because he's not a bit he's not a big fan of the Davies era or Tenant or any yeah. or any, any of that stuff. But, but he says at least Martha's good in it. <laughs> Whereas this. <laughs> Come to center. Oh wow, K9's wearing a Tom Baker scarf. Collar. Why is he being such a dick? <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> But I'm not, I'm not furious. I'm just confused as to why they're doing this with it's, the Doctor's character. It is six episodes, but at the moment, it's so underdeveloped. It's bizarre. It's so bizarre. 
They're making him so unnecessarily evil. <laughs> it's got this weird attitude of, oh, this would be interesting, why don't we do this? Yeah, with no rhyme or reason. <laughs> Crikey! It sounds like the like the line producer or the onset producer reading the lines to give them, you know, someone to play off of. I mean, and then they just went with that. Maybe it actually is the producer. <laughs> maybe. They need to stop fucking joking about this damn jelly baby. Hell, Ben could have been cool if he like led an army of these fellas. Oh. This story. Is the follow-up to the deadly assassin. So you know how deadly assassin you described as Tom Baker does heaven sent. Yeah, this is Tom Baker does hell bent. <laughs> there are some parallels. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought in your tenth generation you were supposed to be as lively as possible, but I guess <laughs> not. Let Zygons be Zygons. I was just about to say the same thing. <laughs> I bet Moffat loves this story. Oh, I'm sure he does. Oh, so clever. You know what this episode needs? Commander Maxwell. <laughs> the fuck is going on? What is this story? There's so many things going on. It's so weird. It's so strange. It's so bizarre. We're I'm not even halfway through. It's his, and this fucking song Tarans as well. Ah! This is this is really weird. It's hurting my brain. <laughs> Can't I cannot wait till we get to watch City of Death. It's written by the same pseudonym as well. Fuck it. Crazy. It's not the same writers, yeah. but the same pseudonym. So if you'd only been watching knowing based on the credits, yeah. you'd think it's the same person. But of course the big difference is, is this one is Graham Williams and Anthony Reed. Yeah. Whereas that one is Graham Williams and Douglas Adams. Yes. It's I've just decided to deem we've had about three stories like this so far. I've decided to deem these kinds of stories high concept, low energy. Yeah. Which stories were they again? Ark Infinity. Yeah. Um, this one. Dominators. Oh, no, that wasn't particularly high concept. No, that was that was <laughs> just low everything. Um, uh, 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 what's Leisure Hive. That's the one, yeah. Yeah. He's putting the Matrix into K9. Well, you fucking deserve it, Doctor. You've been an absolute bastard. So, let, let's have a little... We're halfway through the story. Yes. Let's have a little... Uh, what's happened so far? Doctor decided to come Lord President, became an absolute bastard, asked for his thing to be painted in lead... And, and then the cellophane alien showed up. The Matrix rejected him. He's trying to put the Matrix on K9. Um, Leela and Rodan got banished to the, the, the outsides. And they met barbarian-like Gallifreyans. And, and, and Sontarans are yet to come. Three episodes. <laughs> oh, and there's all the side characters and all their different political intentions. Yeah. Like Barusa and then the guard with and all their... Like they have interesting little tidbits, but none of them really. There's no focus. There's no focus, no. God. If this was the only Tom Baker episode I'd seen, he'd probably be one of my least favorite doctors. <laughs> I'm serious. How did they make the fourth Doctor boring? Yeah. And this isn't like season 18. This is in the pinnacle. Like, this is... Same season 
this horror of Fang Rock, yep. where he is on fire. This is bad. And any of you who think that this story can justify Hell Bent can fuck off. Because number one, different, and two, this is not good, this is bad. <laughs> and This is similar to Hell Bent in that it's bad, not that it's good. And that doesn't justify it, that's just repeating the same mistakes, but worse. Yes. And just because this happened doesn't mean that we should be so scorned by Hellbent. Hellbent still ruined a whole bunch of elements that we liked about the show in the modern context. This does a similar thing, less damaging so far, just confusing more so, whereas Hellbent just digs in deep and fucks it all up. I, oh boy, when we finally get to Hellbent with Jake, that video is going to be something. Yep. Been one of the driving the forces. The culmination of this channel will be when we get to the end of series nine. Yeah. <laughs> that, that three part finale arc mm. is a roller coaster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, why the fuck does Wiggy Media like this story? Why? Oh, because it's got the Sontarans in it. Oh. Love the Sontarans. Which one's is Wiggy Media the Australian? Ginger, the ginger guy. Is he Australian? Nah, he's British, but he's ginger. Don't know if you've ever seen. He's one of the most popular hootubers, actually. Oh, I'll have to check him You'll out. You'll probably recognize. He's got glasses. Guy that reviews Big Finish a lot, like big, big hair. No, that's oh. um. Host Productions. That's the host production. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, no, no, hang on. I'll get a picture. You'll rec- I'm sure you recognize him because he's. He's like one of the top three most popular, like him, Council of Geeks, and like Who and X, and Doctor Who Guide are like the most popular. Until we start rising through the ranks. Oh well, can't get cocky there. <laughs> no, we won't. I don't think. We'll I'm, no, I, I don't think we'll rise watching this shit though. No, I don't, and I kind of don't want to. I like having a like a lower but more. Hang on, you recognise him? This guy. Oh yeah, that's Wingy Media. Yeah, so he did he does he did a few underrated stories videos, mm-hmm. and this was on it. Why? <laughs> I suppose we haven't seen all of it, so. True. The second half could be gold. I don't know. Yeah. Even though we're already in it. I mean, I don't hate this this part of it. No. It's all right. Weird that series season fifteen Leela is. The better part of the story than the Doctor. Yeah. Well, I it's mean, like with Creature from the Pit, how uh, Romana was the more interesting yeah, subplot. Yeah, I mean, I quite liked her in The Invisible Enemy, even though The Invisible Enemy was crap. True, true. Yeah. And the Doctor is a bit like Tom Baker was visibly quite ill in that story. Oh uh, yeah. And I do think I'm a, being a slightly a bit harsh on her because she's like, I'm not saying she's Leela's bad. great. She's great. It's just I think she's better. Yeah, she the, started she's, great. She's better earlier on. She's and the it, opposite of Rose. Well, yeah, Rose is first from. Oh no, actually no, Rose is great in series one. And series four. And, but two. <laughs> she's great in Tooth and Claw. Yes. And she's fun in Fear Her. Yes. Comparatively to the rest of the story. And. She's frustrating the idiot's lantern because that's when they, oh. they re- Mark Gaddis really played up the we're oh, on a date. God, let's, that story we'll, we'll get to very we'll get soon very for soon. us. For our time. Like, you probably actually see you that. You know how they say Mark Gaddis writes caricatures and yeah. not characters? He basically, what he does is he takes Russell's pitch for Tennant and Rose in series two and writes a caricature of those two characters. And it's... So annoying. Yeah. I am talking and I'm not listening! (laughs) (laughs) Surrounded by great tenant like Age of Steel and Impossible Planet. Oh, yeah. (laughs) The best stuff from Series 2 other than School Union. And Girl in the Fireplace. Oh, Girl in the Fireplace, of course. And the finale. And the finale. 
Ah, uh, well, well, he's good in it. Most yeah. of the finale. Yeah, he's good in the finale up until the final scene. But you can go watch my things in the advent calendar. But, what would you rather have? The beach scene or this? Tough question. I really don't like the beach scene. I know. I know, that's why I asked you. <laughs> think about it. This I mean, is this as in this whole serial, or this isn't just. Oh well, well, yeah, because the answer would be that the beach scene is shorter. Yeah. Is it going to turn out there sometimes? Is that what the twist is going to be? There is a way. Well, we'll see. There can't be. It's so boring. Maybe that's why it's often ranked as the worst on Tyrant's story. Is there an episode with Strax in it that's worse? I can't think of one. He... But that's not a on Tyrant story. Because I generally, even though Strax is an issue, like, sometimes, mm. his episodes aren't particularly bad. They're pre- actually pretty good. Good Man Goes to War. I prefer that to this. Oh, yeah. Um, Snowman, he's in. Yeah, this is not bad. Um, Crimson Horror, Name of the Doctor, Deep Breath, like, they're all fine. Yeah. This is film. Yeah. And the effect actually looks better. Yeah. Oh, I stand corrected. <sighs> oh, there we go, Tom Baker blowing on something again. That's what he loves to do. What the fuck is going on? Why are they running? Who are they chasing? What's going on? We're on part four. Part four. (laughs) I'm sure we've missed some piece of information because we weren't paying attention. But that is at the fault of the story. I'm pretty sure he's pretending because they can read his mind. That's what they were talking about before. You just look at right at the camera. Probably. So is Stephen Moffat's entire thought process in developing the Twelfth Doctor from this episode? Seems to be. Yeah. You have our protection now. Are you not satisfied? Yes, yes, yes. No, I'm not. Yes, disappointed. Yeah. Oh. Is this a sometime story? <laughs> Are they just going to come in at the end and then bugger off? They've got a weird filter, I think, on this mm. camera, on this lens. It's like yeah. weird yellow. Yeah. Well, they're trying to do the whole... Disney. Yeah. They're trying to make it... Like, it's, you know, the the iconic Gallifrey look we have in the new series? Yeah. This is what they're trying to do, but the, in real life they can't produce that. So they have to put a filter on it? They're trying to do what... Whoa! Well, that's cool. Um, they're trying to do what Susan described in yeah. whatever episode it was. Sense rights. That's right. Which, controversially, better than this story. Oh, by far. By far. I don't... I, I, sense rights is slow, but it's... I actually think it's... Apart from the last episode, is actually quite interesting. Yeah. This is garbage. It's... Messy. Ugly. Badly paced. Badly written, badly executed, and unfunny just, comedy. Yeah, it's just a mess, and mean spirited as well. Yeah, doesn't have the heart of the Tom Baker era in it. 
It's like, it feels claustrophobic. And similar to a bad Moffat script, all the good stuff is surrounded by bad stuff. Mm. And of course, Clara's in this one, so it doesn't make things better. I cannot wait for the Sontaras to turn up. Because at least something will happen. I want them to kill them all. Yeah. I want those little potato fuckers to burn them all. Burn them all! Why would you not know that, you dumb cunt? <laughs> Even K9 would know that. Is that, a, is that a ping pong ball? That guy has very pronounced nails. You can see why no one fucking talks about this story. Break the walls down. I'm sick of seeing them fall. Oh. I do kind of like how Leela's found savages. No, yeah, that's cool. Because... I- I'm pretty sure... Isn't this Leela's last story? Yeah. 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 Yeah, That's which right. is, uh, worrying. Of course, I the is the story gonna end, and then the Sontarans show up, and it just becomes a different story? I'm sure it'll come up in the trivia, but I think I heard somewhere that this is two stories rolled into one. Right. Well, hopefully this one ends and the Sontaran one's great. It has to be better. It can't get worse than this. Already he's just... better. Instantly better. Instantly. <sighs> it's probably still going to be shit, but it probably will be less shit. It'll probably seem like a great Sontaran two-parter in comparison to what just came before. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean... Also, how the fuck was that an invasion of time? I don't know. There's probably an explanation, but I don't care. No. Because... That story was shit. Yep. And even if this one is still shit, I hope it's less shit. That's my hope too. Who is Doc <laughs> What the hell? The thingy. The wand. That kind of... That cliffhanger felt a bit like the... Russell Christmas special teasers, you know, yeah. Donna and the Titanic. What and about, what ten- about last Christmas? <laughs> Nick Frost. You know, Sucking all the tension out of the fact that the the best moment in Death in Heaven is the Doctor goes there and Gallifrey isn't there. Mm. That is a great moment. And even though like Moffat can be annoying with his whole like meaning shit, at least. The sort of like the hug, the hug, the hugs, hide lies thing yeah. was kind of interesting. Yeah. The fact that Clara's lost Danny, but she she won't tell him. Yeah. The fact that he can't find Gallifrey, and he won't tell her. Yeah. It's like this neat little moment, and then fucking Santa turns up. That's Moffat in a nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> I recently rewatched Last Christmas. It's garbage. Uh, that set design's like making me anxious. It's. I never thought I would hate Nick Frost. Never. He's so charming. How did they fuck that he's, up? He's the worst part of that story. Yeah. He sounds like one of those British gangsters that you see in films all the time, mm. where they speak real low like this. 
This is bad. I do not like this, am I, Anne? I do not like shit episodes. I am. <laughs> ah! You're not even looking at the screen. I'm just so like... <laughs> trying to look at interesting things. The Graham Williams era does not suit Gallifrey. No. Hey! Go Leela! No, I'm just... You are. Trying to absorb the episode. Okay. By not looking at it. I'm, I'm listening to it. It's a big finish audio now. Like the worst possible one. I really want to listen to um the really controversial Zagreus. Zagreus, yeah, because it sounds fucking great. How many fucking times in the story do they have to have the Doctor walking down a corridor going? Mm, 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 mm. Probably about seventeen at this point. I never thought I would see some Tarns walking through a daycare centre. I love how they have that kind of medieval ridging on their boots. Yeah. You know who would make a good Sontaran? Dave Batista. <laughs> yes. Except he's American. Yeah, true. And he's way too tall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, if. Although, he's the same height as Tom Baker. Wow, Tom Baker must but, be... But, really thick. Mm, he's a unit. Mm. As the kids say online. Yes. Absolute unit. He's a thick boy. Two C's. And, a, and an O-I. Oh, I point a gun at you. Surprise, Barusa. But... Uh, then why did the Doctor trust him in an Arc of Infinity if he pointed a gun at him here? Or was Bruce starting out as a bad guy in Arc of Infinity? I can't remember. I've blocked that from my brain, other than the Omega melting and Amsterdam. Ah! Fuck. ah. So he's protected him, because doesn't Bruce become Lord President mm. in Five Doctors? Yeah. And then because he's, you know, he goes. Oh no, because the Castellan's the. Wait, is Bruce in Five Doctors or is it the Castellan? No, I'm pretty sure he dies in Ark of Infinity, right? Yeah, so it's the Castellan who goes on to have his face on the tomb of Rassilon. I have to rewatch the Five Doctors. It's either. Yeah, I think, I think it's the Castellan. So now we've turned into. Warriors of the Deep, but. Inst Not, instead, in instead of Salarians and Sea Devils, it's Time Lords and Sontarans. Yay! I really hate the set design. I hate it. It's ugly. It makes me feel sick. Even the Sontarans don't look good. No. Like, remember in, um... The Time Warrior? No, what's it called? Time Some, Warrior? Yeah. When there's that beautiful shot when the uh, the cliffhanger... Lynx. Of the, yeah, Lynx. when Lynx first takes off his Lynx helmet. looks great. And he turns around and... It's... Even the Sontaran experiment... I'm sorry, did you catch that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, even the Sontaran experiment, you're right. Even the Sontaran experiment, they look great. A little bit dusty, but they look great. Oh, no, Tom Baker's completely just dropped the attitude. Because it was a bruise for the other aliens. I wish the Sontarans had a deeper voice. Oh, maybe the key is... The key of Rassilon is the key of ta key to time. Can't be because he didn't know what it was before it was introduced to him by the White oh, Guardian. Oh, right, that's right. Not gonna lie, a lot of the Lady Tom Baker's 
seasons blur into one in my head. I'd love to listen to the big finish Tom Baker. This isn't even really late. It's just yeah. post Hinchcliffe. That yes, all. yes. This is in the middle of his era. Actually. True. But his early seasons, everything's so distinct. Seasons 12, 13, and 14, which oh, is... fantastic. End of Barry Letts into Hinchcliffe. Yeah. It's the peak of classic who's popularity and just overall... Quality. Quality, ambition, variety. Daring. It's, it's, I've watched it all. It's, it's unbelievable. Mm. The worst stories are decent. The mm. best stories are some of the best of the show. Yeah. I mean, when you've got Bob Holmes as the script, edit, script editor, of course it's going to be great. And he was the script editor for the first half of this season. Mm. It was after... So he script edited Fang Rock, Invisible Enemy, and Image of the Fendile. Yeah. And then he wrote The Sunmakers. Right. And then left. And that's when Anthony Reid came in. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> So the, the most interesting things about this story are things that aren't in this story. Very reminiscent of another story we're not too fond of. All I can think of is like a short, stocky, like, you know, the stereotypical British gangster. Mm -hmm. But again, I feel it's like a I guess that's like a fair comparison to Sontarans. Though, um, Sontarans are more soldiers than thugs. Yeah. They're just a bit more brutish than, like, the Daleks and Cybermen. Yeah. I hate that hallway. So why does Clara turn up in, like, the shit ones? Like this She was in Ark of Infinity as well, yeah. And Dragonfire, which is also on the list. Oh, shit. Um... Yeah, she was in the Five Doctors. Oh, yeah. Because of John Pertwee. Yeah. Patrick Troughton, he was in like Miami Beach or something. They, that wasn't a story. They just superimposed him yeah. into Florida or somewhere. That's weird. Yeah. Um, William Hartnell was on Gallifrey, obviously. Oh yeah, but that's yeah, that's <clears> different. <throat> Did she run into the Eighth Doctor? Maybe at the very end. But oh no, yeah, that's right. The eighth doctor ran past her. Yeah. And then the tenth did. And then he did, wearing this scarf. Yeah. <laughs> Funny jokes. We're not even halfway through the list, are we? Uh, but once it's done, it's done, and then we can start talking about things we Thing like is, in the, the show. The last two we've had, we've been all right, so it was we were bound to get a bad one. Yeah, like, you have to balance them out. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's random, yeah. but so far it has been relatively balanced. Good, bad, good, good bad. bad, good, bad. You know, which is what we want. But God, good fucking God, we better get a better one next time. Give me a Colin Baker. Even if it's like Time Lash or something, where it's horrible, at least it has Colin Baker in it. Exactly. I think this story is overrated because it's not in more bottom ten lists. They're trying to make it look like Rodin's going to become the new companion. Yeah. This is the story is very slowly creeping into my bottom ten. It's it's getting there. It's really getting there. It's pretty bad. It's like comparing it to Wedding of River Song at this point. Oh, Wedding of River Song is much better than this in my eyes. The only ah, oh, because they're both finales. They're both messy. They're both. Oh. One is much shorter. Yeah. One's not two and a half hours long. I really, really, really don't like the winning of a song though. But this is also very bad. Ooh! Oh no, I hate that. I hate. I hate seeing eyes without the face. 
it's something that's always freaked me out. That's why that scene in Nightmare of Eden got to me so bad. Fuck. Mm. It's I think probably mm. what caused it was Sky from Midnight as a child yeah. freaked me the fuck out when she's just in the background staring at them. Yeah. Curse of the Black Spots. I got a pretty personal problem with that one, but. Oh, it's harmless. <laughs> Dominators. Slower, but... Oh, Dominators is really bad. At least Troughton... Mm. I don't think I can compare this one to Kill the Moon, though. Because they're so different. Very different stories. Ah... Uh, it's hard, it's hard because they're very different. Delta and the Bannerman is shorter, but it is really bad. Yeah. Maybe if I watch it really closely, it'll get better. <laughs> uh, the Smugglers. I think, ah, oh, I really, 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 really don't like the Smugglers. It's four episodes on, like, a beach side, and it's really bad. Whoa. 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 Okay, I, even though I do get... A bit of a guilty pleasure out of the Merca. Mm -hmm. This, I don't think this is as bad as Warriors of the Deep. Warriors, no. Warriors of the Deep is, is really, really, really bad. No good ideas. Yeah. Like, not, like, yeah. Not, like this, okay, there's good ideas, but they're so poorly executed that it's yeah. terrible. Whereas this has some good ideas. Um, terribly done, but nowhere near as badly done. There's a couple of moments in this that are right. Like the yeah. Savage's plot is underdeveloped, but it's okay. Yeah. It's watching you now. <laughs> oh dear. I've completely lost the story. I do, I do not know what's going on. The fella who said he would wait for his turn to become Lord President is working with the Sontarans. Yeah. And he's hijacked the TARDIS, I think. Alright, we'll do the next one next time. Right, we're Just back. To... Yep, hello. Yeah, it's been like, what, three weeks? Yeah, two and a half, three. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> We've we found a new location with Jake, and now that's... And now that's gone too. <laughs> so, hope you enjoyed it for the two episodes you got to see there. <laughs> it was a great location Series too. Series two is going to have at least three locations. <laughs> oh dear. But speaking, yeah, worst of classic who, yeah. Mm. At least we've gotten through the bulk of it. We've just got And we know that it's going to end. We hope. We hope. <laughs> Maybe there's secret 7, 8, 9, and 10 Maybe parts. Maybe it's a 12 part of... Uh, <laughs> I hope not. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Yes, so here we go. Season 15 finale. Yay. Invasion of time. I don't know if I remember this. I do, but I'm not sure if I remember it being here. I thought it happened earlier. Maybe it happened again. <laughs> it's just ironic how they're talking about a great key right before the next season. Mm. Did the writers know anything? or No. no. I'm glad we have subtitles, because I would not be able to tell what he's saying. Classic who hardly ever planned seasons in advance. Mm. Ooh. That's a bad redesign. Ugh. I'm not sure if you've ever seen a TV show called The Mighty Boosh. You've talked about it yeah. many times on here. Because it's that's the it looks like they're kind of paper mache strange creations mm. that they come up with. It's funny how the Sontaran design got progressively less convincing because mm, like, the first one uh, Lynx, the, Lynx looks great Even, Time Monster Time Warrior Time Warrior yeah, yeah. No. 
We'll get to the time monster. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, the time warrior. The, it, the reveal when he first takes his helmet off is so cool. Yeah. And this was... We'll put it back on. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Did he just lick his lips? Did he, he just licked his lips, didn't he? Yeah. Because yeah. the because Link's in the time where he looks amazing. Yeah. And then even even um <laughs> even in the Sontaro experiment, they didn't look they don't look as good. They look a little bit like yeah, worn, grey. But yeah. they're still fine. This one just looks a bit. Yeah. It looks like what you would consider to be a very well done cosplay on a low budget. Mm. Like, you'd be, yeah. if you saw that like in a convention, you'd be like, well done you for putting that together. But for, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, th to be honest, this is a very well done, well, not well done, but it's a, this is sort of, this story is kind of a cosplay of a Doctor Who story, to be honest. It feels a bit like a fan film, mm -hmm. where there's lots of talk, walking around co the same corridors again and again and reusing places and having the characters that don't quite actually feel like the characters themselves yep it's a commendable effort but because it's actually from the, the, the I would be much more forgiving of this had it actually been a fan film yeah but it doesn't go without criticism because the circumstances of this story are the same that the war games had yeah two stories fell through and you have to make a big one in place of it mm. at the very last minute. And the war games turned out to be, in my opinion, the, gre the greatest. And then this turned out to be one of the worst. Yeah. And you can't say it's a matter of timing because this is peak Tom Baker era. So yep. it's not like the show wasn't popular. It was. Big, big this isn't. This isn't late. Um, it, uh, late Baker it's not like Colin it's not like Leisure Hive no. it's not like Colin Baker and it's not like it's early Sylvester McCoy yeah she's <laughs> why of all the episodes with Tom Baker in name of the doctor did Moffat choose to show a clip from this one because the story is like a Moffat finale <laughs> you're not wrong <laughs> You can see why Russell, like, retconned Gallifrey to be so much better than it is. Mm. Well, because <laughs> when it first appeared, and things, sub some subsequent stories, it was rad. And, like, the mm. lore in, like, the Five Doctors. Yeah, I, I think, think Gallifrey's awesome in the I Five Doctors. I think this is the first one where it's not good. Mm. Mm. Why do they keep walking in the same room? Because I think that, like, the, the thing, the black star that they were shot with, the energy beam, like, it's like a virtual prison or some it's kind of like god complex yeah but they don't really they don't know how to show it because the directions are stale and they clearly didn't have enough budget or locations yeah at the end of the story <laughs> I was re I was re-watching our great and garbage companions video last night mm -hmm. and hearing your rant on K9 <laughs> <laughs> this is for the kids <laughs> Better than the sea devil, do <laughs> Maybe it's one of those ones where he puts it on and then he goes. It clicks into place, yeah. yeah. I wonder if, if they considered the possible. Like with Linda, they had it in mind that they could potentially use Rondan as another companion, like full time. This was like a Wait, trial. Wait, Linda? You, uh, was it Linda who they were considering if ro they were going to kill off Rose? Yeah, yeah. Like, sort sorry, of when you said Linda, I thought of Love and Monsters. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Have all of them be the companions, including <laughs> the Absorber? Off. That would be great. I'm going to absorb the TARDIS. <laughs> who can, uh, him and the Thirteenth Doctor trying to out northern each other. <laughs> God, I mean, he could he could absorb the three companions she's got, and it would minimise the dialogue and be more charismatic. Yeah. God, Bradley Walsh is the Absorbloff. <laughs> Wouldn't be as good, because the reason the Absorbloff is great is A, the design, and B, the idea of the creature in general is awesome. And three, Peter Kay mm -hmm. is really funny. Have you seen the, the, the documentary where he's like, he's, 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 as the Absorbloff, he's talking about the episode, and at the end he's like, okay, soon I'm going to get into my costume. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
Is this really some towering behaviour? No. That would be lead on. Or no, or they'd say, show me the way, because they wouldn't let someone else take charge. As you, as you say, yeah. There is no greater honour than a death in battle. This is <sighs> this is worse than Ark of Infinity. Yep. And I can s- s- specifically say why I think that with two words, mm-hmm. Colin Baker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was great as Maxwell. Uh huh. The Daily... What? Why is he reading the Daily Mirror about the Titanic? Why does he have a silly straw? Why is this so stupid? Why is it blue? Why does it look like it was shot in a fucking gymnasium? It's a sauna. I think that's actually a swimming pool. He's just got Chelsea boots on. Paradise Towers is a better swimming pool room than this. It's like aliens in hanging out in the sauna. This is fucking Gallifrey. <laughs> this is Gallifrey. That's a good track by Murray Gold. I can't imagine that track playing to this episode. <laughs> but there's a scene, uh, I can't remember, oh, what is it? When Joe and the third doctor, the masters tied them up. And the third Doctor talks about Gallifrey and the Master. Time Monster. Time Monster. Mm-hmm. That scene, you could easily put this as Gallifrey over it and it wouldn't seem out of place. Oh, man. There was a classic. God, what the hell? <laughs> you couldn't have done another take. No. Nope. Oh, they already broke the chair, so they can't. It's weird that they made the weird cellophane things this more. Is the strangest set design ever. Mm-hmm. When you talked about, remember when you, you and Jake talked about New Earth being like a confusing yeah. geography? Like this is very much the same. Worse. Worse because every set doesn't look like it's actually part of the same building. Probably because yeah. it isn't. No. You karate chop those shower curtains. It's like some shit out of Scooby Doo, man. How anyone could say the Leisure Hive is worse than this, I do not know. Apparently people think this is fun. Because Leisure Hive is about, like, tachyonics and stuff like that. True, it can be hard to follow. Episode 4 is particularly bad. Oh, it's awful. It is really bad. I'm not saying the Leisure Hive is good, but I certainly think... Ew. Oh. Feed me, Seymour. Bring me on that long. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that was in the script. I think that was a a bakerism. It couldn't have been. Like a painting. <laughs> <laughs> the story is the source material for Moffat's era. Explains a lot. <laughs> what the fuck are you watching? Why are you just filling up Venus de Milo's butt? Ooh, a secret button. How convenient. A button? <laughs> Jesus, we're only... Si- oh, is that a TARDIS? Wow. I think... Aren't they in the Doctor's TARDIS at the moment? Is there a TARDIS inside a TARDIS? I don't know. I thought this was all the like corridors of the Doctor's TARDIS. I'm sure it was, but I don't remember them going in there. Because the Sontarans oh, were... Oh wait, no, that's right. That's where they were at the beginning. Yeah, the ta- the Sontarans were in the console room and then that's they right. went through. Hence the swimming pool in the library. Mm-hmm. More fat. This gives me that same uneasy feeling like when I'm playing a video game and I clip through the floor and I can see parts of the level I'm not supposed to. Yeah. That's how it feels. Yeah. If any of you own um, Lego Star Wars the video game, the original, um, 
the um, either the PS2 or Xbox version. I think mm. it works. The um, second chapter of Revenge of the Sith. I think it's called. Mustafa? No, this no. Second chapter. So oh, it's right. when they're on the ship. I think it's called like Rescue the Chancellor or something. Mm. So there's a there's a part where you're. It's sort of like a circle, circular map, and there's a bunch of fans that go up. Oh yes, yes. But if you run to a certain bridge that goes towards you, you will be able to jump if you're a Jedi onto one of the platforms, and then that breaks the level, and you can see everything. Ooh, yeah. yeah. I want glitch tips in Arkham Asylum, the first one, Batman Arkham Asylum. Yeah. There's a the, you have a sort of rappel grappling hook where you can sort of fling it up and it'll you'll sort of go in a straight line, um, and I didn't do this, but I saw someone who accidentally grappled onto an object far far in the distance and just kept flying away and the level was just going hundreds and feet hundreds and hundreds <laughs> of feet in the background. It's pretty funny. Yeah, just Batman floating on nothing. Mm. Those are ugly walls. This is an ugly episode. Um, there is some of the old WWE games where you can... Someone's holding the stairs, mm -hmm. and they walk into you, and you walk into the, the barricade. You go through the barricade. Ah. And then if you keep walking, you just go out, and then the thing gets bigger. <laughs> or the smaller, I mean. If you play 2K15 on a six-man ladder match... There's a very high possibility of a glitch that if someone does a finisher off the top of the ladder, they'll just start spinning and then just get faster and faster and faster and become like an orbit around the <laughs> ring. It's really funny. Oh, there's this freeze you can do. Like, I think it's like in the middle of a Royal Rumble. If you're doing like a chain grapple, but then you freeze, someone like interrupts your grapple, you get stuck like this, <laughs> and then your, your limb gets tugged where they are. It's like, it's so funny. Bad writing. That's a bad line. Glory to die for the glorious Sontaran Empire. Why is the Doctor holding a gun? To shoot the Sontaran, I suppose. I remember you did say this was um, Tom Baker's hellbent. It's what it feels like. His fingers remind me of the Absorber off. Oh well. Just like Ark Infinity, eh? Uh, I feel, like, I feel uh, like the um, they what these guys rewatched the Deadly Assassin, and they saw the bit at the start where he shoots that Time Lord, and they think that he actually what well, actually was him that yeah. did it. Like that, that's probably what they thought, but then they actually didn't realize it wasn't. Mm. Stab him, Leela. Imagine if that was how Tom Baker regenerated. Well, you're stared by Leela. She got a fright and like, ah! And then he regenerated. And she will stab four times. I'm not going to remember any of this, am I? <laughs> ah, I suppose. Makes sense. Wearing a bit thin. Hope the ears are a bit less conspicuous this time. <laughs> no more. Here we go. This is how I felt at the end of the Myth Makers when Vicky left the first Doctor. She's like, here you go, have Katarina. Fuck that. But then, wait, who's after Leela? Romana 1. Well, yeah, she's not, she's, she's good. So, but then again, Leela. Of course, K9 has to stay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. Wait, does he? I don't remember. No, he builds another one, doesn't oh, he? Oh, that's right, yeah. Compare how compare that to the Sarah Jane farewell. Yeah. Just shows you the different relationships. It's just like Susan and Vicky. Mm. Because Susan's farewell was really good. Oh, Even though it's the most it was, iconic. It was yeah. similar to this, but it was developed over the story, whereas this was developed over one episode. Mm. But just like how been a bad character exit. Well, at least this wasn't a bad character return, and then a 
Yeah. Even worse. Re-exit. Ah, there you go. <laughs> oh, it's this mean. Store. Oh, I thought I totally thought store. I read that as like story editor, but they just forgot to no, put in the rest of the words. No. Then I realized it was a character name. No, it's a Santaro. Yeah. <sighs> John Nathan Turner, production unit manager. He's making his way yeah, up. Yeah, working his way. This boy, <laughs> John Sterling, Chris Wimber. What a great name. Colin Napson, D. Kelly. Anthony Reed or Ugh. Red. Ugh. Barbara Gons. Graham Williams. Nah. Nah. <laughs> right. Finally finished. <laughs> it was an invasion of my time. Yeah. Haha. <laughs> yeah. Um. What did you think? What did you think of the story? <laughs> what story? Mm. There was it was so boring. Mm. It was it was like so pretty much everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. So it was like the dominators only more angering because it was doing instead of doing it to a new set of villains it was doing it to both mm. the time lords and the Sontarans. Yeah, I had a feeling when I made the list of episodes that we were going to watch for this series the ones that were going to be the most similar to Hellbent were going to be the Gallifrey ones. Well, because they literally have the most in so, common. Ark of Infinity, obviously. Yeah. And now we've got Invasion of Time, which uh -huh. is way closer to Hellbent. And then, yeah, I think, even though it's not a Gallifrey story, the only other one left that I think could even be close to it was the um, Armageddon Factor, I think. Right. Because um, that's like a, a finale in its own right and a bad one, apparently. But I... <laughs> highly, highly doubt that it'll be, hopefully, <laughs> not as bad as this one. Yeah. Because this is shit. It's bad. It's really bad. Humorless. There are people that say that the Trial of the Time Lord's worse than this. Fuck off. Yeah. At least that's creative. And the behind the scenes, like, mm. Pip and Jane Baker, mm. for the ultimate foe. I commend them for what they managed to pull out their ass for that, because mm. that's that was no easy feat. Mm. Um, and also, Tom Baker having all his best elements removed, i.e., his humour being pushed to the background, compared to Colin Baker having all his best elements pushed to the front. Mm. Yeah. Yep. And also, that was four stories mm -hmm. in one, whereas this was one story. Yep. Spread over six parts. So at least you got some variety, but I am, obviously I haven't actually seen the Trial of the Time Lord. Well, at yet. least the Trial of the Time Lord, the Time Lords seem like a legitimate threat to the Doctor again. They have they, they sort of regain some of that power that they had in War Games. Yeah. They feel even though they've still got the ridiculous headgear and stuff, they, they it is it reminds me obviously it's nowhere near as good, but there are elements of that kind of the Gallifrey is important mm. and like the Doctor is kind of powerless against them. I love how them. in um, The Sound of Drums when you see the, the flashback to the young master he's wearing the War Games outfit. Yes, that was such a neat little Yeah. Mush. Yeah, okay. So the Doctor. I think this is the worst characterization of Tom Baker's Doctor I've ever seen. Not the worst performance, because mm. he was trying, but mm. definitely in terms of the writing, the weakest representation of the character. As I said, all his strengths were pushed to the back yeah. whilst they were trying to... For not really a justified reason other than, oh, there were aliens read it, reading his mind. But when that dragged on for three and a half episodes, it became so dull and repetitive. And they, they didn't... In trying to create this sort of... Not brainwashed, but out of his own control doctor they didn't find anything interesting to do with it he was just grouchy yeah and it was way too over the top it was mm. so S -s mean it was just yeah. mean yeah really mean yeah it's it's a lot like 
the Hell 12th bent. Doctor and Hellbent yeah. um, where it's so just because <sighs> I get like the whole thing of uh, the idea of well in this particular time period he's like he's not the Doctor but it's like if you're gonna do that at least make it interesting well c- that, yeah it comes back to my thing about the War Doctor as well is like he's so nice <laughs> Yeah. And warm. Yeah. He's sad, but like where's the you know, the warrior? Where's the mm. the merciless one? Yeah. Colin Baker and William Hartnell are far more cruel than the war doctor. Yeah. Well I mean Christopher Eccleston in series one, like Dalek and Bad Wolf parting of the ways, you see like, that. That rage. Yeah. Like and it was it's but in that, when it's in the middle of the time war, when you hear about that in whispers like all oh, the oncoming storm, that makes sense. Yeah. Whereas going back to that when he returns to Gallifrey seems like no 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 it would be going beyond that now he'd be in a different yeah. space it wouldn't just be Clara and if he want, if he was so obsessed with dead companions and power over time why not go back and get Rose why not go back and get Katarina Katarina everyone who died yeah why not go back the fucking the Waters of Mars did this so much better mm. so much better yeah I like how this has stopped being a review of Invasion of Time and just a rant about Hellbent, but fuck Hellbent. Yeah, it's but, bad. but this one in, yeah. the, in the same way is yeah. bad in the way it characterizes the Doctor. And it just and doesn't, it's yeah. just like they they go on and on and on about it, but and then suddenly in part four he just switches and he's fine again, and then for the rest of the story he's just and it just it, there's no build up, there's no tension, there's no anything, there's no like. The Doctor doesn't necessarily always have to go through an arc, especially not in classic Who. Like, in individual stories, right? Mm. In individual serials. But when you have such a harsh change in the character and you're trying to figure out the mystery, how does that impact him? Like, coming out of it, it's it's two different stories, just on the same location. It's yeah. it's 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 so strange. I don't get why it was... Why... Like, the Sontaran stuff, the cliffhanger in part four was not necessary. End part four, where you ended it, pick up part five at the beginning of the cliffhanger and make that the Sontaran yeah. invasion of Gallifrey or something. And at the end, was that, was that like a... Like, when he smiled at the camera, is that, is that them saying that he's still evil, or is it just him no, being that's like, him. oh, I built another K-9? That's a sort of like, ah, oh, you thought K-9 was gone, but no, he will torment you some more. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Enough. Gallifrey falls no more. Yeah, they did a shit job with the Doctor. Bad. And that's one of the biggest downers is the fact that Tom Baker is usually one of the highlights, whereas he was actually one of the worst parts of the story. When you have the most engaging presence, typically... Mm be the least engaging then you've got a problem especially when you're surrounded by other than Leela incredibly underdeveloped and boring characters yeah speaking of Leela Leela um <laughs> she was fine she and had then, a cool story with the savages and then that and then, went and then just randomly left because she found love I guess but it was so it was so forced it was one of the most bullshit they shared like a couple of moments um, of I'm pretty sure I've heard there's so many stories about like people going to conventions to talk to Louise Jameson about that exit and every time I was like nah it was bullshit yeah. hated it everyone hated it well cause especially like you have this sort of warrior woman character yeah. the end of her arc is oh she found herself a man you know yeah, it seems yeah. very counterintuitive yeah. Yeah. to the point of the character cause it, that story worked with Say Susan, mm. um, or Joe, yeah, but not Leela, yeah, because Susan and Joe they kind of had their own sort of, they were maturing in life, they were moving on from the Doctor, even Martha yeah. to some extent, yeah, but th- that's more complicated, and yeah. I'll get to that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. well, I mean, Russell loves to do that complicated romantic stuff sometimes, yeah, um, and he did it best with Martha, um, but yeah, it's. With Leela, it just seems wrong. Like, she's one of the characters... Like, she should have died in battle. Yeah, like a, like a Sontaran would. 
Mm. Yeah. Her and the Sontaran should have gone out like scrapping. Yeah, like Lila and the Sontaran should be like a match made in heaven mm. as a story. Yeah. But it just didn't happen. No. And the Sontaran. Oh, we'll get to that. But yeah, yeah no. It, just so frustrating. Because now yeah. I've seen all of her stories except for Underworld, which is on the list. And Underworld apparently is a nothing story. So I've basically seen all of her character. Yeah. And it's so disappointing to see how she was so brilliant at the beginning. And then it felt like ever since ever since her eyes turned blue, mm. it just went downhill. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just be- I think She became of, tame. I also think part of that is because halfway through this season Robert Holmes left as script editor and was replaced by Anthony Reid who's less superior <laughs> well it's, it's like it's like Robert Holmes is like um, the Jesus of mm. of writing Doctor Who and then you meet some dude who's like got long hair and a beard yeah and a, and a dressing gown it's like it's not quite the same thing Clayton <laughs> <laughs> He's Anthony Reed. Yeah. Oh, but that's doing a disservice to Clayton. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I've heard that Keita Time's pretty good. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, he definitely, he definitely, you feel a sh- there's definitely a shift in tone from the first half of season fifteen to the second. Yeah. Um, with Robert Holmes leaving, you get two stories on the list. It's like <laughs> it's it's the. Bringing up the characterization, it reminded me on the flip side of series 11, but instead of the characters being too soft, they were too harsh. But, but in Leela's case, she was like the companions in that, where she was just nothing. Mm. And then she left with no justification, and there was no yeah. real anything there. Mm. There was no spark, there was no flare. I, I just, I just, I'm not convinced that she fell in love with that guy because she just no. bloody met him. No, if it, if it was maybe one of the savages, like the savage leader, then maybe. Yeah. But. It's just very strange. Yeah. Very strange. You know and, what would have been cool? And it's disappointing because this is a six-parter and you could have easily developed it over the course of You know of what would have been parts. cool? Is if way down the line, if like Colin Baker or Sylvester McCoy went back to Gallifrey and met Leela as like a high priestess on Gallifrey and she was yeah. all like, she was, and became a time lord yeah. or time lady. And they're lady, like, what happened yeah. to that guy? And she's like, ah. Oh, dumped him yeah political power she dumped him she married him for political power Ooh. and then divorced him and we're Ooh. doing Game of Thrones <laughs> yeah yeah that would have been cool yeah big finish get on it um, <laughs> I'm sure they already have well Leela they've got stories of Leela during the time war I'm which, sure they've already done all, everything you just said yeah um, um, well because Leela's met the war master in a, oh yeah, <laughs> I, I, not in the box yet that I have, but right. but in a different one. I know that she has, but I don't know in what story. Right, um, but yeah, no, very disappointing exit for Leela. Oh, it's yeah, travesty. Especially because it's a character I liked as well. Yeah, and speaking of characters you liked, <laughs> Kano Mark One also left in this story. Yay! <laughs> it was replaced by Mark Two, who's basically the exact same. Yep. <laughs> but uh, but uh, but but that's all I got. I, uh, who cares? K nine. Yeah, no. I mean, his scenes on um, that were on film were good. They it's just because they looked good, yeah. yeah. But you know, and the prop was actually working. But, you know, um, plot device. Didn't he cost like eight hundred pounds per episode? Probably to maintain. Probably, which is like a significant chunk of the budget. Yeah. Because adjusted for inflation, it's over a thousand pounds. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. if you uh, if you translate that to NZ money for the time, that's yeah. like at least three thousand yep. dollars. That's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. On a prop that worked half the time. Yep. But you know, kids. At least, at <laughs> least in you who actually no, they had issues with that because I remember um, Elizabeth Sladen. We were talking about that in trivia. Elizabeth Sladen was talking to the crew about how good luck. Because he's uh-huh. a bastard. <laughs> yeah. He'll break down what on you. What about Sarah Jane Adventures? We'll get, I guess we'll find out yeah, when we, I've when we get to it. I've only seen a couple of episodes and K9 was barely in them. Good. Um, mm. <laughs> even though he's actually alright in the New Who. Oh, he, no, he's good in New Who. I like yeah. him in New Who. It's just... When I talked about K9 and his garbage companion, like, that's purely classic Who. Yeah. 
They reworked them and re. I feel like we may have to watch Canon and Comfy at some point. I've seen it. Have you? Yeah. It's all right. Better or it's, worse? It's, it feels just like a prequel to the Sarah Jane Adventures. Yeah, but in terms of K9. Again, it's more about Sarah Jane than K9. Really? Yeah, from memory. They just use K9 as a marketing tool. Yeah, because they knew he was like popular with the kids. Right, and they're like, we're making yeah. it, but it's, but because they, I don't think, because I think they were worried that if it was Sarah Jane, the kids wouldn't watch, but the adults would. And they're like, uh, yeah. let's get the kids because they're a big market, so we'll make it K9 and come And the parents will walk in and see that Sarah Jane's yeah. on it, and they'll be like, oh, here we go. Yeah, from memory, it's there's a significant, like, she's the main star. Right. Um, so it's basically like a prequel to. Thingy. Interesting. And also, I'm pretty sure it ties into the Five Doctors it as does. well. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Yeah. I remember always being so confused why Sarah Jane was with K9 because I'm like, hang on. Yeah. She never met K9 in the classic series. Yeah. So why is K9 with it? But obviously that something happened. Yeah. Um, but what we should or shouldn't watch is the uh, I can't remember what it's called. I think it's just called K9. Yeah. It's the ABC Australian. Yeah. I don't know how that happened. I'm, I'm more fascinated by the behind the scenes of how that came about <laughs> than the actual show itself. Well, I mean, Doctor Who was massive in the 70s. This, this came out in like 2011, I think. What, 2011? It's a really recent thing, what, yeah. so it's like a spin-off of a spin-off. Yeah, except K9 looks... So remember how, like, when we were kids, there were, like, robot dogs that people could get? Yeah. And they had the four legs. Oh, like Robo Sapiens. Yes, yes. Yeah. But, like, clunkier. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like, K9 gets a redesign and it looks really bad. I've never watched the episodes, I've just seen the redesign. It looks like plastic and gross. Ah, oh, well. Can't wait to watch that. Anyway, we'll move on from that. Mm. Um, the Vardens. Oh, cellophane. Yeah, the go- it's one of the worst villains ever. Design wise, the worst. Yeah. Worse than the Quarks and more annoying than the Dominators. Mm-hmm. They're just they're t- just terrible. Yeah. Um. At least the Merka is charming. Merka is funny. Yeah. And then they get the lady who's doing kung fu. And the Vardens are just. Uh, and you can the, the, the voices are only, wrong. Not, you're, the, not, you're not only not only the design, but the actual characters themselves. Yeah. Like the dialogue's terrible. The actors yeah. are terrible. The design's terrible. The graphics are terrible. The story they go through is terrible. Yeah, everything. It like I have no compliments and. The, the Doctor's interaction with them start off really confusing in part one. It just starts in the middle of the story. And yeah, like, just what the hell's, there. What the fuck's going on? Why is the Doctor such a cunt? Yeah. Why are the Varnans and the Varnans are just like, Hello, Doctor. <laughs> Terrible. It's bad. Yeah. But then we got this on Tarans for two episodes, and they were shit too. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I think Store is one of the weakest Sontarans I've ever seen. Probably the wor- maybe even the worst. Yeah, because at least Strax isn't positioned to be a villain. At least Strax doesn't look like he came out of a fucking like it. it like Store looks like he was in the makeup room for like five seconds and went. It's like they had a rubber mask, like from a two dollar shop, and just like here, we'll just put like newspaper rolls in there to pad it out to make it look. Yeah, and we'll just put. Um, mascara on your lips. Mm. <laughs> and you're not allowed to close your mouth, you just gotta walk around. Yeah, yeah. And he sounds like a just a he English speaks bloke. Like this as well. He never moves his tongue. Mm. It's not I don't think it's like I don't think it's the actor having a lisp. I think it was a character choice. Cause it was so exaggerated. Yeah. Didn't have much in store. And then the doctor shot them. Yep. Shot him. The other Sontaran was away, and then they just never addressed where he went. Maybe he's still inside the TARDIS now. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe they should have shown Just him. like those people from Warriors of the Deep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting exhausted just thinking about Warriors of the Deep. Yeah, all those weird monsters from Journey to the Center of the TARDIS. Mm. Well, at least those were like kind of creative and interesting. It's a mess of an episode. We're though. complimenting Journey. To, we're complimenting a Stephen Thompson story mm-hmm. compared to this. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Also, Journey to the Center of the Tardis is a good-looking episode. Yeah. Everything in Series Seven is, I think. Mm. Well, Series Seven B. Well, what looks bad now? I don't like dinosaurs on the spaceship. It doesn't look good. It looks. Oh yeah, no. It looks. It looks 
fine. That's more, I think that's more down to the design choices as opposed to the production values, mm, though. But even the production values themselves, it just because of the sets and stuff, it yeah. just it just doesn't look that great, especially compared to what bookends. And the fact that they use Bad Wolf Bay as a set is really mm. weird. Yeah. And dinosaurs, like what? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's weird. Yeah. But yeah, no, the Sun Tyrants were terrible. Bad. Hmm. The cliffhanger was great, but they really didn't add much to the story after that at all. No. Um, and then we had the Time Lords, which is very... Like, Barusa was so forgettable. In it was song. weird. I guess... He was too the... young. He was too young, I think. Barusa was the older guy. Was he? Yeah. I don't remember. Because I'm pretty sure Barusa is the Doctor's mentor. I oh, yeah. Um, one of. And then... Because I'm... <laughs> Unless I'm getting it wrong, because I could be getting it mixed up, I swear Bruce is the one who goes Dulali. He's the one who gets his face on the tablet in the Five Doctors. Yeah. But he's regenerated by that point, and he's yeah, much younger. In, in um, he's also in Ark of Infinity. Ark of Infinity as well. And 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 Deadly Assassin. Yeah, but they're all diff- they're all different actors. Each yeah, he regenerates on. every time. Because I think Michael Goff was him in. But didn't he die in Ark of Infinity? Regenerated, Michael I think. Cox. I think it regenerated, yeah. Oh, yeah. Unless I'm misremembering. I'm sure someone can correct us. They just don't show the regeneration, I guess. Yeah, nah. Yeah. I can finish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, that, well, I don't remember now. <laughs> we watched it in a few weeks, so I can't remember. Was he in part six? Who? Bruiser. Of this? Yeah. Yeah. He was the old man who was walking around with Lila in the red gown. That was Bruiser. I'm pretty sure. Do you not remember him being? I don't remember. <laughs> he was the one who was sitting in the chair when they came into the room, and I he's like, where he falls over the chair. "Yeah," and he's like, "Oh, doctor, nice to see you." Oh, th- that's oh, Barissa. That guy. I'm pretty sure that's Barissa. Oh. Oh, wait, listen to what the doctor says. I think Chancellor. Oh, is it Barissa? I don't know. Well, surely that is Barissa. It looks like it would be. Mm. Because I think he's Chancellor at this point, and he was vying for power. Um, okay. So, we'll go with that. We'll say that that guy's Barusa. He's fine. Yeah, he's fine. Whatever. Um, <laughs> and then there was the other Time Lord. He was the guy who was vying for power. He's the guy who's like, oh, I want you to kill the Doctor. Because he was, said he was working for the, the cellophane dudes, and it turned out he was actually working for the Sontarans. And then I don't remember what happened to him, even though we just watched it. Yeah. His stuff in the start, I remember you commented saying, uh, um, you commented saying that it would be interesting, but it's not. No. <laughs> it, yeah, it could have been, but it wasn't. And then you had, um, uh, then you had like the tribal people as well. They're fine. Yeah, they're fine. They're not as good as the ones in Nightmare. No, um, in um, Creature from the Pit. Creature from the Pit. No, they were way better in Creature. Creature mm. from the Pit is way better than this. Creature from the Pit is. Good. Good. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> don't. I, I don't get it. Yeah. Don't. I don't get it. No. It's weird. I think it's just that one scene that everyone thinks it's bad. Well, the fact there's a giant green penis in it. Yeah. That yeah. he. That he blows. Yeah. I've heard people say it's boring. I don't think it's boring at all. I think it's great. This is boring. Um. Yeah. This is shite. Um. The plot terrible. One of the worst ever. Uh, inconsistent ba- barely barely anything positive to say it's so it like, plot wise the only positive is the cliffhanger yeah, between and 4 like, and 5 and like what the commenter said when they warned us about this story they said it's like a bad Moffat episode and it is they're right who, who, do you remember who it was? no I don't remember but whoever you were you're right yeah. we should have heeded your warning it was like Daffy or Surf Widow or one of those people one of the regulars yeah hire both Daffy and or Surf Widow mm. or whoever else it is yeah it may be. Maybe who BP8? Don't know. Hi, who BP8? Um, but it was shite. And I hated it. And yeah. I never want to watch this again. Um, so, this is a very divisive story. I'm shocked. Almost 50 50. Fuck that. Yeah. So, half of those people are very wrong. <laughs> well, apparently, people say this is a really fun story. <sighs> See, that's interesting. Like it's pulpy. They say yeah. it's pulpy. Because that's interesting, because there's other pulpy stories which people like, like Nightmare of Eden, mm. where people, I've read things people saying that's boring, where I personally found that pulpy fun. Yeah. 
and this is just a slog. But yeah. I, I, I guess everyone's a, like, of course, everyone's got their own tastes and everything. But yeah. this well, is one just I just, like how I'm, for six parts, I struggle. Well, it's just like how Joey Morgan said he finds Warriors of the Deep to be pulpy fun. And he also finds this to be pulpy fun as well. <laughs> Somehow. Um, it's, it's just, it's, I've struggled to see how, even with that in mind, how for six episodes that mentality can keep you going through what, through the through sitting know. through it. I don't know. It's interesting. If if anyone in our comments actually has seen this and thinks that way, please comment and let I'm us sure know. Sure they do because it's yeah. like I said, it's a 50-50 story. Yeah, I'm, I'm really interested to hear the other side I mean, of the argument. Most people admit that the production on it's pretty shit. But that's bygones be bygones, zygons be zygons, you yeah, know, like yeah, it's yeah. like like mm. production I think everyone can accept even if it's crappy so long as the story yeah. is creative but and people good. say yeah, but that's what people like. They like the fact that they get to see inside the TARDIS. They like the fact that it's like a. Like that. They're like they're like. Whoa! Apparently, people are taken aback by how the Doctor's gone crazy. Um, all of the comedy elements that we didn't like, they obviously like. Yeah, well, like, that's the that's, Jelly Baby stuff. Yeah. And then there's the cliffhanger. So I guess I can sort of see why someone would have fun with it, but I just didn't. No, neither. Um, out of two hundred and forty-one stories, it's one hundred and eighty-eight on DWM. It's above I feel like angry. Nightmare of Eden. Wrong. It's above Planet of the Dead and Wrong. the Keys of Marinus. Wrong. And the Idiot's Lantern and Victory of the Daleks. Only one of those I would put beneath. Which one? Idiot's Lantern. Really? You put Idiot's Lantern below this? I on rewatch, man, that was hard. It was. But the only thing is it's forty five minutes. But like, as you can see, like as people were saying, like apart it made the, me physically uncomfortable. Apart from the um, the horrible decision to make every angle Dutch, the production on it's not too bad. The production design is nice, but again, I don't think it's fair, even on the best production design of Old Who and the worst production design of New Who, to compare it because it's kind of apples and oranges okay. between budget and ability and time. Right. Besides, Idiot Lantern is just crap. It is crap. I think I prefer the wire to the bottoms though. Yeah. <laughs> Still crap. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> uh, this story is like way above some other story. Like it's it's like eleven spaces above Colony in Space. <laughs> and it's like uh, more like and below Colony in Space, like below that is like Lazarus Experiment and Journey to the Center of the TARDIS and the gunfighters and Armageddon Factor, which apparently is... Yeah, apparently people say Armageddon Factor is worse than this, so that's worrying. I dread that. Yep. Um, and you know, like, almost 20 spaces below this is the long game. And like, more, like, 20 spaces exactly below this is Daleks and Manhattan Evolution of the Daleks. Somehow. That's pulpy fun. Yeah. Well, I don't get how they can excuse the Doctor's writing in this, but then have such a problem with how the Daleks are written in that. Like, I find that so strange. How you uh, can be okay with one, but not the other. Mm. It's very weird. Yeah. Hmm, we'll get to Daleks in Manhattan. Um, and Creature from the Pit is like 25 places below this. I just don't understand. I don't know what's wrong with this fandom. <laughs> um, and the but it's kind of it kind of goes to show that and you know what is above this mm, what the flesh two parter which we'll get to later um, New Earth is also above this which I would agree with but I know you didn't weren't too fond of no I think so I think it's better but apples and oranges all closer to apple cores and orange Leisure peels Leisure is above which I think I would agree but yeah. I'm just only just though. Leisure Hive is. It's two parts shorter. Already bad at the end. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's not a lot above it that I would be. Because this, I, I honestly think this is pretty t fucking terrible. And there's it's not bad. a lot. There's not really anything above it that I would c put below it. But there's stuff that is below it that I'll put way above it. No, like, uh, little, 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 like Creature from the Pit, Daleks in Manhattan, man. Long Game, Gunfighters. Oh man, I cannot wait to get to Series 3. I have. I was watching Gridlock on the way here. 
man, oh man, oh man, it's such an underrated episode. Yeah. Such an underrated season. But yeah, oh, the ra- the ranking of Imaginative Time is baffling. But, but the thing is about those GWMs is it kind of goes to show what's something that's wonderful about the Doctor Who fan base is that people from all over the place and all different walks of life watch the show and they can get different enjoyment for different reasons. Yeah. Which is great. That's cool. It's just which that is which is weird because like Rings of Akatan is in the bottom five, I think. Yeah, that one baffles me because yeah. I really like Rings of Akatan, and yeah. the people who tend to like that era are a lot more yeah. than me. I mean, it's it's really cheesy, but bottom five. <laughs> and if but like again, it's kind of cheesy. But if if it was any other Doctor other what, than Smith, what, it probably wouldn't have worked. What, and it's funny because that was in like the series that had just aired as well yeah I've heard that apparently the reason why people don't like it is it's Smith fans that don't like that it has bad bad green screen in it I think that's one of the reasons why which is really weird odd like Smith fans that caught on to that era and hadn't watched Classic Who odd yeah Clara's good in that episode yeah which that's weird it's one of those it's like this five episodes I think where Clara is like a genuine character yeah and yeah it's it's based like Rings of Akatan to me is like it's it's like a a bit like a it's like a sort of like a more cheesy less enjoyable version of End of the World but I wouldn't say it's in the bottom five no ever. Not, not even close that's just so ridiculous I, I would struggle to even call it bottom 50 like it's yeah I'd it's, probably give it like a fairly positive score. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I'm gonna. I'm interested to when we get round to it with Jake yeah. on rewatch. Because I mean that flower, like the coming in on a leaf thing, is very cheesy. But I don't think it's as bad as people say it is. No, it's it's. And stupid. that's that's us com- like complimenting a Clara episode. <laughs> yeah, those early days. You know how in Infinity War, spoilers, but everyone's seen it. Um, at the end when anyone everyone vanishes right yeah imagine if somehow Clara vanished like that but she turned into a pile of leaves and floated away in the wind <laughs> I came into this world and so leaf. she gets hit by the raven and turns into leaves yeah and just instead of floating away it just goes and all just becomes a pile and the yeah. doctor sweeps it up yeah and, and then in Hellbent he gets like a leaf catcher and goes <laughs> <laughs> Clara Clara come back to me <laughs> Oh dear. Uh, IMDb scores. Part 1, 7.8. Part 2, 7.7. Part 3, 7.6. Part 4, 7.6. Part 5, 7.5. Part 6, 7.4. Nope. Um, right, so the writer. Yes. David Agnew is a pseudonym in this story. So, what? In general, it's a pseudonym for Graham Williams and the current script editor. Mm-hmm. So, it's the producer and the script editor. So, in this story, it's Graham Williams and Anthony Reid. Yeah. Whereas in City of Death, it's, it's Graham Douglas Williams and Douglas Adams. And it shows. <laughs> yeah. So, it's strange how the pseudonym of David Agnew produced one of the best and one of the worst to- stories ever. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Very strange. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. But it's like David Smithy. Or is it David Smithy? I think it's David Smithy. Alan Smithy. Alan Smithy. There's a there's a pseudonym that directors use when they want to disassociate themselves from projects. Right. There's a new one now, but for the longest time, for like 50 years, it was Alan Smithy. So yeah. if you ever see directed by Alan Smithy, you know it's probably going to be crap. I think I'm um, pretty sure, because you, you know, <laughs> you're going to cringe when I say this, but you know Epic Movie? Mm. You know Silas the Albino? Mm. That's Kevin Hart. But he he's his name's not in the credits because he didn't want he didn't want his name to be on it. Jesus. Though he did credit himself in superhero movie, because that one's actually funny. I, I superhero movie's the one that comes closest to being an actual spoof movie. That's not just hey reference. Though it does have a lot of that. Oh, I have got a beef with. We those are the pirates movies. of the Caribbean. <laughs> I've got beef with those movies. 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 They were re- I I I loved them when I was like ten. When I first saw them, but now I'm like, whoa. But you, but they also like spoof movies are dead now because you had Naked Gun and Airplane and Fly and um, Top Secret and um, Hot Shots, and they were really funny and clever yeah. satires and spoofs. Yeah. And then you get reference. There's yeah. a naked woman. Very nice. It's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. crap. 
It's so crap. Mm. Superhero movies are the only one of that lot, even though it's just a rip, a beat for beat Spider Man. <laughs> what is that? My claws can cut through diamond. I'm not wearing any diamond. <laughs> It's a funny line, yeah. and, and then also um, when when or, Kevin Hart's in the when he's when Leslie Nielsen shoots the nail gun and he and bloody thing he catches it and he's like oh and he's like how did you do that oh good reflexes and then he just shoots Kevin yeah. Hart in the hand he says nope yeah although I do like in an epic movie when Peter is pissing Sudoku into the snow that's pretty funny do you not remember that uh, ah yeah, yeah. yeah but like that's one of the rare moments the rest of it's a bit cringe a bit. <laughs> <laughs> booty, 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 rocking everywhere. There. Yeah. Captain Jack Swallows. <laughs> I don't know. I hate that I know that movie so well. Uh, and then they did Meet the Spartans. I think Jack Swallows isn't too bad in that movie. I think most of the rest of it's pretty shit. But Jack- well, the, the thing that makes Jack Swallows work, I guess, because there's so many like of these references that yeah. instead of actual jokes. <laughs> like, the thing is in about the middle of the fucking the White Bitch's Castle, like a fake Ashton Kutcher comes in and goes, "You just got punked." <laughs> it's yep. just so random. They're so bad. Like, <laughs> like the uh, at least with the Captain Jack Swallows, he looks and sounds like him. Yeah. At least there's that. I'm not saying it's anything. I'm not. I'm not saying it's anything remotely resembling anything of quality, <laughs> but it is something. Yeah. Fuck those movies. <laughs> I got big beef with them. May have to do a review of them at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, disaster movies particularly bad. It's shocking, man. Yeah. Um, but. It's, oh, you know what's weird? And um, date movie as well. Ooh. You know what's really weird? I, the other day I had a thought of, and it would be funny for a YouTube video to have like a, like what we do with this, but for like ha- like all eight or however many of those films there are films Ooh. there are, and ugh. I mean, I mean, it starts with scary movie, which is a bit like to that's now. an actual. The thing is about those like scary movie. Yeah, is it's an actual. It is a direct like rip uh, rips off scenes from stuff, but it still has a beginning, middle, and end. There's like an actual story and a structure yeah. and characters, yeah. even though they are cartoonish. It just feels over the to- so tame now compared to the yeah. others. <laughs> well, because the others they took. They but then you get like scary movie five, which is like Charlie Sheen in it. Scary movie three with the president is funny though. Yeah. Because Leslie Nielsen is funny, right? But but everything else like is crap in that movie. Like Michael Jackson stealing kids. There's a scene where Michael Jackson shows up and tries to steal a kid, and that's that's the joke. Because oh my god, he <laughs> he. Um, I think the one that frustrates him the most about epic movies is that the reference to Borat is literally just Borat. That's the problem. Yeah. There's no there's no satire. There's no like... It's literally it's, just the same thing. There's no taking a spin on it. There's no taking a side or making an argument or making a statement. It's just, this is an impersonator. Yeah. Ha 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 ha. That yeah. is all those jokes in those movies are. Yeah. And that fucks me off. Because then you have like Airplane, which is so clever, where it's, we have deadpan Leslie Nielsen. The, a woman says... He, he says, I've got to get this man to a hospital. And this woman says, a hospital? What is yeah. it? And he says, it's a big grey building with patients in it. And there's actual jokes. And they're yeah. funny. Yeah. It's the same thing with um, when fucking Mr. Tumnus takes you to his crib. And it's got Scar- him doing Scarface. But it's literally just him doing Scarface. There's no joke. There's no joke. There's yeah. just, it's just reference. It's under the couch when I'm looking for change. <laughs> In the toilet. <laughs> Just dumb. Anyway, we're on a massive tangent there. Um, f- fuck. Yeah, but the script for the story was very sloppily and hastily put together and not well handled at all. It was no. just bad. Yeah. This was lacking an actual writer mm-hmm. because it was literally just the producer and the script editor. Yep. cobbling something together to finish the season and it didn't work and I'm glad they didn't do that again really well they did kind of but not as poorly mm. um, the director Gerald Blake also directed the surprises this surprised me so much when I found out that this he also directed the abominable snowman what 
What the? Are we sure that's not another pseudonym? No, it's the same guy. He directed the Abominable Snowman, which is this like really convincing pseudo historical in the Tibetan mountains, and, and it's, it's so, so atmospheric. And like the Yeti, and it's great. And the castle, and the like, all the quarries, but but it, it's it's got like such a great landscape. Mm. Whereas this just has a shite geography everywhere, isn't it? Yeah, it's just crap. There's no yeah. I get the point in the last episode that there is not supposed to be a logic to them running around, but like, it just, it didn't feel like, haha, clever, look, look at what we can do. Yeah. It felt like, oh yeah, well, instead of writing an actual story, we'll just have them run around the same room four times. Yeah, it was very point and shoot as well. Mm. There's no, yeah, there's no creative cinematography. Yeah. Like, slapped again, on again I was sets watching sets look terrible as well again I was watching Gridlock again you can't compare production designs but in terms of shot composition yeah. there's a shot when the Doctor's recharging the like opening up the gates for the people to flood up there's this great shot where half the frame is just sorry that one third of the frame is just the face of Bo in profile whilst the Doctor is doing what he's doing in the, yeah. and it just looks great yeah. and there's just and there's none of that kind of great imagery like in Creature from the Pit for example yeah. there's lots of like long movements and, and yeah. they, ju- they just do stuff creative stuff with it and this yeah. was but just then an abominable snowman like the way it anticipates the yeti yeah and the way it the, I, one of the most memorable imagery from that story because obviously most of the episodes are missing but I think episode 2 exists one of the most memorable images I have from that story is the when v- Victoria and Jamie are going up that cli- that cliffside with mm. the rocks, and they meet the guy who they end up meeting again in Web of Fear. Yeah, um, that is such a convincing landscape. Yeah, but then you get like the landscape from this when Leela goes outside, and it's just so fake. Yeah, it's just not convincing at all. No. Yeah, it was it was shockingly inconsistent direction as well. Yeah, it was not impressed. Yeah. Bit naff. Mm. He also did work for Out of the Unknown, Survivors, The Omega Factor, Survivors, and Blake was... Seven. Oh yeah, mm. Survivors is good. Yeah, and the music, Dudley Simpson. Didn't notice it. Uh. I don't think he had much to work with. Yeah. <coughs> Dudley Simpson kind of has this like sound he just goes with when he yeah doesn't have anything special lined up. Yeah, just so it just happens, and you, yeah. you get used to it. Um, trivia time. I'm interested to hear the trivia for this one. This disaster. Leela's romance with Andred is undeveloped in the story. <laughs> is that just the whole trivia? <laughs> it's not trivia; it's fact. Yeah. Um, Jameson was invited to continue her role. She was unsure whether she should stay until the end of recording, so a plot device had to be ready to allow her to stay on Gallifrey. So that's like a business problem. But even so, you could have come up with a mm. better plot device. Look at the than parting that. of the ways. Nice doctor. Again, mm. you could have had Leela save the day yeah. and sacrifice herself if you're going to have that out. Yeah, but you know, they can't have characters die, apparently. Even though they have done and have. Do- and did subsequently, do. yeah. yeah. Williams era. If this was Hinchcliffe, he would have done it. He would have gotten away with it. Mary Whitehouse would be like, you can't show this on a kid's show, but he would have done it anyway. Yeah. Get himself sacked just so he can kill off Leela. Yeah. Yep. Oh, well. Um, the Sontarans return in this story, making it their third appearance on TV and their last until The Two Doctors. Mm-hmm. The story had the working title of The Invaders of Time. But Invasion sounds better. Yeah. Grammatically. Yeah. Uh, Stan McGowan, who is a Varden, is credited as Varden leader in the Radio Times. Shouldn't be credited. <laughs> Sorry if you're still alive. Um, or if you're dead, don't want to speak ill, but you know. <laughs> you did shit. Um, r- to I be mean, fair. He did not have a lot to work with. That's true. And maybe he was directed to do it that way. Yeah. But I don't know why the hell they would ask him to do it that way. But then again, it may be because they were all the same shit. 
all the Vardens. Yeah, they, w- they were told to have a consistent crap time. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Rodan is the first female Gallifreyan to appear on screen since Susan Foreman more than a decade earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, according to Into the Unknown, a feature read on the DVD release of the preceding story, Underworld, the budget on that story was so tight consideration was given to cancelling it and allotting the story's budget to the invasion of time. Well, we haven't seen Underworld yet on this. Well, I'll get back to that fact. I'm going to bank that, because if we get to Underworld and it like, looks great and they use it creatively, and I'm like, no, nah, that's fine. But if Underworld is like shockingly bad, I would be like, nah, fuck that, and just give the budget to this so it doesn't look as crap. Sontar and costumes. For two episodes, just some. We'll get back to that. Yeah. Banked. Because I know, I know some things about Underworld. And why it's on the list. Um, <laughs> this story provides one of the most extensive views of the interior of the TARDIS ever provided on television, as in the Mask of Mandragora, the deep TARDIS interior is shown to be an eclectic combination of rooms with highly variable designs, such as an indoor swimming pool and industrial building. The interior of the TARDIS became much more homogenized after this in the John Nathan Turner era. The TARDIS interior greatly resembled the console room with white homogena- oh, with white rounded walls throughout, from Castro Valba onwards. Uh, such an extensive exploration of the TARDIS interior would not be undertaken until the 2013 story, Journey to the Center of the TARDIS. Um, this story replaced the cancelled killer of- Killers of the Dark story. Do we know anything about what that was? Um, do you want me to look it up? Oh, we can do that later. I'm yeah, sure I don't, we can, know, we can, I don't we have, can, have yeah. internet. No, 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 so we can do a video of it later. Sure. If it's, if it's, if it's particularly interesting. Right. Yeah. Like one of those what-ifs, maybe. Yeah. Um, the first Doctor previously encountered the Vardens um, in an audio story, and so not really. Uh, <laughs> this is the weird part of trivia, is it tells you stuff that they've done later, because yeah. they wanted to bring back a villain, but yeah. do it in the past. Uh, the Doctor assuming the presidency is a direct consequence of putting himself up for a position as a ploy during his previous trip to Gallifrey and the Deadly Assassin. Mm-hmm. Uh, what a terrible sequel. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, like you said, Tom Baker's heaven sent his Deadly Assassin, yeah. and this is his hellbent. Yeah. Uh, the Doctor bring. Thankfully, they're not one after the other. God. It's not that, um, like, immediate whiplash. Yeah. Uh, the Doctor brings Leela to Gallifrey, although he had previously shown reluctance to bring an outsider there in the Hand of Fear. Mm. A version of... Clara... <laughs> ...was in the capital during the, these events, through, though the Doctor didn't even notice her. <laughs> oh dear. I feel like... Because, like... Ever since it first aired, I've always liked that episode, Name of the Doctor, but I feel like it's going to get to a point where There'll be a, like it's going to crack and it's yeah, going to break. Splinter, yeah. Yeah. It hasn't happened yet. On my last viewing, I was still fine with it. I still enjoyed it last time I watched it, but every like every time you watch it, it's like chipping away, and it's yeah. like, at some point, we're going to end up hating it. Because mm, it's got so many things. It's yeah. just like, I should not like this, yeah. and I do not like this yet. I still like the episode. Um, Leela complains about the lack of her Janus thorns in the face of evil. Later, during his fourth incarnation, the Doctor encountered the Vardens in another audio. Fuck. Hopefully they're better. Uh, the Doctor and Leela have previously encountered Sontarans and uh, this is another... Audio. You know, stuff. Skip that, skip that. Uh, skip that, skip that, skip that. Robert Holmes was asked to write this story. He declined, not wanting to return to Doctor Who so soon after he left. He did make contributions to the story, such as allowing the use of Barusa and the splitting of story into two segments, the first four episodes being based around the violence and the final two being based around the Sontarans. He should have wrote it! Should have been brought back. Urgh. Bugger. But he came back the next season mm. to write two stories. So what's going on here? Stupid. Oh well. 
Um, the story replaced a six-part script called The Killers of the Dark. Oh, here we go. Yep. An ambitious adventure about the race of cat people with the ties to Gallifrey and included elements such as four in the size of Wembley Stadium full of cat people. It was deemed impossible to achieve even on a film budget and abandoned. Oh, man. Sounds interesting. Cat people. Obviously, I think of the cat nurses. Mm. But... What about the ones from Survival? The it's cheetahs. Also, yeah. They're cool. Except the, you know, chase to the playground. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> Jake's reaction to that. <laughs> uh, John Arnott was the four- fourth choice for Barusa. Whoa. Angus McKay, who played the role in The Deadly Assassin, was unavailable. <laughs> right. That's pretty funny. Viewership. Part one. Yep. 11.2 million. Too many. That's a lot. That's a lot. Part 2, 11.4. So it went up slightly. Part 3, 9.5. <laughs> part 4, 10.9. So that, I, th- I feel like there may have been something on in yeah, part Yeah, sports event or something. Part 5, 10.3. Part 6, 9.8. So it is a downward trend. Yeah. It sort of went up. But it was still very high. It was still strong, yeah. Yeah. It's It's just the era. What today's market would kill for. Yeah, it's the era, you know. Yeah. Although I guess Woman Who Fell to Earth got around about that much. Yeah, which is good. Because people are like, oh, nine millions, nothing compared to like such and such. But it's like, well, you keep in mind that back then, streaming services... And on demand, and yeah. you know, did they did not exist? Give your conclusion and rating out of ten for the invasion of time. Boring, messy, underdeveloped, and all the like ugly. All all departments were kind of underdeveloped, and it was really just it was a drain, like a kind of a visual headache at points. Characters were all flat. Really disappointing exit for Leela. Really, really really wished there was something I could say positive about it other than the cliffhanger was alright I guess but that was more just shock as opposed to you know genuine like ooh you know it was like mm. more like how did the Sun Tyrants get there what mm. as opposed to all this, it was more about how as opposed to what if that makes sense mm. so even that is a bit tainted so it's just bleh it's very bleh I do not recommend anyone watch this bleh very bleh 2.5 out of 10. Um, so, production wise, terrible. Yeah. Story, terrible. Tone, terrible. Yeah. Characterization of the Doctor, terrible. <sighs> Exit for Leela, terrible. Side characters, terrible. Gallifrey Lord, down the toilet. Um, tone, like in terms of like comparing to the rest of Tom Baker's era before this, terrible. It's gone completely downhill. Mm uh the randomness of it is terrible mm. the fact that most of it is schlock is terrible but not good fun schlock like just yeah. crap um this has a lot of similarities to Warriors the Deep but it at least has the part four cliffhanger and there are parts where like I think in the last two episodes Tom Baker's not evil <laughs> so there's a couple of funny moments there's little fu- funny moments um and yeah, there, there is a couple of redeeming factors. The Savages side of the plot was okay. Some of the stuff with Leela and that female Time Lord was okay. I didn't like the comedy, but I don't think it necessarily ruined the story. It just no. was just very badly executed. Um, but having said that, this is one of the worst Doctor Who stories of all time. Yeah. At the moment, it's probably in my bottom 10, maybe in my bottom 5. 2.5 out of 10. Crap. Pretty fucking terrible. But, is it worse than Hellbent? No. No, it's not. Because, well, I don't really know why. <laughs> I can't really explain it. I can. <laughs> yeah. But I don't have the time. So just, ladies and gentlemen, wait until we get to it with Jake. And then we'll, mm. we will unleash. And however long that video takes. Yeah. 
there are things that Hellbent has that this doesn't on the negative side of things. Yeah, it's got more significant issues mm. in the long term, mm. both for Classic and New Who. But that doesn't really complement this story at all, because this story is also terrible. No, it's just saying why Hellbent is worse, but yeah. it's not saying... It's, it's saying why Hellbent is worse, not why Invasion of Time is better, if that mm. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Now it's time to defend an episode against Hellbent. The Rebel Flesh and the Almost People from Series 6. Suggested by CP. Mm. So they've got a paragraph for why they yes. think the Flesh 2 is worse. Mm -hmm. As I say, the Flesh 2 Parter is amongst the worst of New Who for me, so defending it and scraping its merits from the bottom of its white slimy barrel is indeed a challenge. If being charitable, the atmospheric castle-like setting, the welcome focus on on Rory for a good chunk of it, and that shock ending in the Titus with Amy turning out to be a, ga uh, a ganger yeah. is probably the highlights. But it's a story for me that is an, ov is an overlong who's the baddie run around in which in re retrospect seems to merely serve as an excuse for some double Doctor shenanigans and as a protracted setup for the Good Man Goes to War story that follows. Hope this helps. Well, you're not wrong. The Flesh Two-Parter, I've said many times, is one of my most nitpicky stories ever. It's it's not in my bottom ten, but it's pretty close. It's It's one of these things where... It's kind of like multiple straws broke the camel's back. Yeah. Well, it's not so much that it, as a whole, necessarily is objectively like, oh, this is awful. It's mm. just, oh, there's something I don't All like. Small it's yeah. That the story just failed. Yeah, it's just like, oh, it's it's like the it's like the foundations of a good structure crumbling. Yeah. Um, on itself. If, if there's one compliment I can give the two-parter is that part one is a sort of dull bad but not terrible episode yeah but part two is really the where I the, my hate for the story yes. happens I think um in I think in saying that I think the fact that it feels more like a traditional sort of base under siege is complimentary yeah and it's this one of the worst ones but it's doesn't really damage the show it just sort of I was rec I recently um, made a comment about the flesh two part mm. and it was read out on the big blue box podcast yeah um, and basically what I said was is it's it's not an abomination but all of my nitpicks with bad who are sort of crumbled together into yeah. one story mm. um, whereas hellbent goes beyond that it, br it does a lot of stuff that you haven't seen ever before for good reason and, and it, it also it's not it goes beyond my net picks with Doctor Who yeah what Hellbent does it goes into not my net picks my absolute cardinal do nots in writing yeah. in general hmm. things that really fuck me off in any franchise in any story on top of all those nitpicks and on top of all the bad character choices and on top of all the nonsensical out of place comedy on top of everything else whereas the Rebel Flesh two-parter though it is long and a slog yeah. and very messy and very very annoying and very dumb. annoying I could see if someone came up to me and said how they absolutely loved the Rebel Flesh two-parter, yeah. I would be like, yeah, but I wouldn't be upset about it. I'd yeah. be like, no, that makes sense. Hellbent is the one episode which truly gets under my skin when people say they like it. Yeah. N no other epi like mm. any other episode, I'm like, that's fine. Everyone's in that's there's nothing wrong with that. But Hellbent, I'm just like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Put my foot down. Yeah. yeah. It's the one. Yeah. Everything in series 11, people loving that, even though I wasn't huge on it. Even the Saranga Conundrum, which is really yeah. pathetic. I can see why someone would have fun with it, like the fact that it's like this 
Um, like the pating. Like the pating. Like, yeah, and, and things like that. Like, y- you all know I do not like the saying conundrum, but yeah. I can see why. But Hellbent just does so much from writing standpoint to a, to, to, to just, like, it, it, just everything. It, the, the sort of mentality of it, the, the tone of it, the, the message is really fucked. And mm. it's... It's it's kind of like all the the problems with all previous Moffat finales to the nth degree. Yeah. To, it's it's. Uh, and there's like with the Flesh Two Part, there's like one or two or three things I can look at and be like, oh, that's actually quite neat. Yeah. Well, like the when when he finds the pile of deformed mm. ganger bodies, like mm. like that's a cool horror. Yeah. The CGI scene. looks shite, but the the, the concept, idea of it, yeah. yeah. And you can see how if little kids were watching, it'd be like, oh, that's. Messed up. That's frightening. Yeah, and then you win the fact that it's revealed that Amy's a ganger is a neat yeah. twist. Yeah, they unfortunately don't do much with it. Yeah. But, but it's a good lead into a good yeah. man goes to war. Absolutely. Um, and even though I don't like it, I can see. Wh- I think when I was a kid, I liked the double Matt Smith duo thing um, when yeah. it came out because I was like tw- thirteen when it came out. Um, yeah, I think I remember. I don't remember exactly, but I think I enjoyed that because I remember enjoying Matt Smith at the time. I don't like it now, but I can see why someone would. Mm. Um, but in no doubt, the flesh two part has got a lot of problems, and we'll get to that when we review it. But it's just so. again, like like so many of our defenses before, it's not got those long-lasting, damaging effects that help ended. Yeah, there's a couple of moments that are pretty shite, though. Like there's that. People who've only watched it once probably won't remember, but when you rewatch it, you not realise that it wasn't actually the ganger that was abusing Amy; it was the doctor. Mm. And that was that's a bit weird how that yeah. happened. Yeah. Um, and also, especially because they try and make Matt Smith the kind of you know, it, it, this is more a problem not with the episode but series six as a whole. Yeah. Is they did not know what to do with Matt Smith's doctor. Yeah. And, like, cause half the time he's fun and bubbly and half the time he's serious and mad. It's not half... It's not, like, it was, the bubbly thing is a facade. It's like, yeah, that's yeah. just him. He's just goofy and stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which I got problems with. But, like, again, I could see how people could enjoy it. Um, but I would rather... Um, I don't know. It's pretty. There are some comparable in terms of that specific moment. Yeah. There are some comparable things between Hellbent and yeah. in terms of the Doctor's mentality yeah, towards his other similar, yeah. companions and other people. It just. Yeah. But. I guess the uh, one thing that um, people would argue is, just from an entertainment perspective, Stephen Moffat's a much more engaging writer than Matthew Graham is. I still, even so, I still think Hellbent even for Moffat fans, is really boring. Mm. It's, it's, it tries to take itself so seriously doing dumb things. And the jokes that are few and far between, they're very niche. Yeah, like a very, very strange. Like, and out of place. Like, recontextualized and reworded a bit, some of the jokes could land in other episodes, but in yeah. Hellbent, it just... Ugh. It feels like Moffat's like, oh, I should include the joke, because you have to entertain the families. Yeah. And it's just... And it just fucks with the law so much. And there's so many plot holes. Mm. How did the Sisterhood of Khan get there when it's a time lock? Or oh, magic. They poured a potion and teleported there. I don't know. And also in Hellbent, the villain leaves in the first 20 minutes. Not even. S- it's like 17, yeah, and 15. We, and then we never see him again. And the entire rest of the story is just the Doctor and Clara having a go at each other the something first... something it's I was recently watching Under the Lake and Before the Flood and the girl who died right mm. and so Under the Lake and Before the Flood I like the actual story but when you're talking about the in between scenes that Moffat's <laughs> chopped in there it feels like it doesn't feel like an actual scene it feels like a bunch of tumblr posts just plastered into the story yeah it's so weird it's like like they're in the middle of like seeking out these ghosts and then they just run into the TARDIS and stop. And then there's all this stuff about, like, oh, I have a duty of care, Clara. It just is so it doesn't feel like, wank. It doesn't feel like natural character growth. It feels, again, bringing it back to gridlock. Mm. 
That moment where she sits him down is earned. Yeah. That is earned. Yeah. And because Martha's actually a well-rounded, consistent character, in just the two episodes we've known her prior to this, yeah. it's earned that she says, no, you're going to tell me what's happening. And then the Doctor finally has to confront his truths. Yeah. And finally he becomes the doctor not just this i'm just this romantic hero i'm going to pretend yeah. i've not i've not got this horrible weight on my shoulders anymore yeah. he accepts it whereas with that it's just it, it feels very like yeah again kind of like the matt smith thing where half the time he's goofy and half it, it the goofiness doesn't feel like like with patrick trout and sylvester Court, mccoy it doesn't feel like a front it just feels like under when moffat does that goofiness it feels a bit like the doctor's just kind of an idiot yeah Sometimes it works really well. Sometimes it does. Yeah. But when it doesn't work, it's really ah, yeah. something right. It's really And a lot of the yeah, a lot of the way the like, just the scenes that Moffat plastered into series nine is just it's just so pretentious and it's like I don't get it. I don't get what it's doing. Like because there's people that like defend series nine and saying it's got this deep and meaningful story arc for these characters. It's just like but they're just doing the same thing over and over again in the every only, episode. It's the, just like, I've got a duty of care. A hybrid. A hybrid. It's coming for us, Clara. I have to look after you. You're addicted, but we're together. But we're not. But we are. And I'm angry, but I love you. And it's like, what, what the fuck's going on? It's so confusing. And also there's the added subtext and then, like, of, of the fact that they referred to Matt in deep breath. In deep breath. Yeah. They refer to the Doctor as Clara's lover. Even if it's just like an offhanded, or perhaps even a lover. And she's like, shut up. You know, mm. like, you know, that's, that's, what their inti- that's what Moffat's intention is. Yeah. Remember that scene in The Doctor Falls? When Bill's like, you know how I'm gay? And he talks like, yes. And she's like, oh, well, good. good. <laughs> yeah, like, that's great. Yeah. yeah. But it's like there's like yeah. this connotation under it. It's like, wait, wait, what? What yeah. are you saying? You're saying that Bill fancies the doctor? Or what the hell? It doesn't make any sense. What are you doing off yeah. that? But, uh, like, <laughs> it's, but, but the fact that, like, it's, it's, sometimes it feels like, oh, it's a commentary on abusive relationships, and other times it's on toxic yeah. fandoms, and other times it's on this, that, and the other thing. Yeah. There's no but what consistency. I was, what I was going to say was those scenes that are plastered into the series nine episodes. Hell bent for me is like two thirds of that story is just that for forty minutes, and it's like I can't watch that and enjoy it. It's so irritating. You know the only episode that doesn't have those moments, Sleep No More, because yeah. even Heaven Sent has it, but yeah. it's actually done well in yeah, that somehow. because she's dead. Yeah. Because it's in his head. It's his version of her. It's how he perceives her, yeah. not actually her going. Oh, Doctor. And it wouldn't be nearly as terrible if she actually went back and died at the end of Hell Bent, but she didn't. She got her own fucking TARDIS with a shielder. <sighs> Bad. And that's why it's worse than the Flesh Two Parter, because Flesh Two Parter doesn't do any of that. The only th- major character thing it does was interesting. Mm. Shocking. Because the stuff that Moffat put into the flesh two part of was actually the best stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Because it felt like something that he'd, even if it was retconned, it felt planned. Yeah. It was back in the early days when Moffat was still bursting with ideas. Not yeah. necessarily doing them well, but there was at least something that was going to be there, yeah. and then we got to Let's Go Hitler, and that all died. But at least in early Series 6, you could see he was trying to formulate something there was a goal um but when you get to series nine he was just so he felt tired Ugh. so the scripts felt tired yeah and then hell bent was just unmanned and just exhausted like, it's just so much stuff in moffat's like in series nine it just feels like moffat's just it, I don't, it feels I, like I, he I don't was, know, I don't know how to I don't know how to describe it aside from he was under the influence like it's yeah. so fucked up it also feels like and not in an interesting way like in a sad way yeah but it also feels like, it's he, like he he kind of it feels like he it feels resentful yeah 
It doesn't, and and show and the show dealing with resentment and you know negative emotions and, and negative relationships. That's interesting, and that can be done well mm. with the right planning and with the right writer, and not shoving something that could be way more interesting aside. Mm. When you present the story like, hey, it's going to be the sort of pulpy, sort of western on Gallifrey, cool. And then suddenly, oh, it goes into this intelligent um, story about the spite. When metaphors and subtext take over the text itself, mm. then you've got a problem. It's like Hellbent is as like Doomsday, right? If the first 15 minutes was the Sidemen and the Daleks, yeah. and then the last 40 minutes was the beach scene. Well, there you go. That's that's it. Whereas the rebel flesh is just yeah, with a couple of moments. Yeah. Matthew Graham does a base under siege story. And yes, it's, it's crap, but whatever. Whatever. Move yeah. on. Hope that was satisfactory for y'all. Yeah. Um. I guess we're about to find out what we're going to be watching next time. Call in, call in, call You've in. You've got a one in about a one in ten chance of it being Colin. They Baker. get better every time that we do this. My chances of seeing Colin get better. <laughs> yeah, that's because they keep. It's only one in one in one story at a time. It's getting knocked down. Uh, Never tell me the odds. Never tell me the odds. There's so there's two Troutons. There's two Troutons. Yeah. Three Pertwees. Six Toms. Still, even though we've watched, what, how many Toms now? Like four? Four. To the, most of these have been Toms, but yeah. granted, longest tenure. Yeah. Four Davisons still, uh, two Collins, and four McCoys. Haven't had a McCoy yet, or a Colin. Yeah, because that's all of season 24. Well, we don't have Delta in the Bannerman right. because I've already seen it recently, yeah. but we do have Silver Nemesis, yeah. which is season 25. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we haven't had a Colin or a McCoy yet, so that's what I'm kind of hoping for. Yeah. Because I want something new. Colin, um, Colin, Colin. I'm always nervous when we do this. Mm, it's like a roulette. I just don't want another Tom Baker. No, I'm. I need a break from bad. We Tom watched ba three in a. We watched three in a row. Yeah. Even though the creature from the pit was good and Nightmare Veen was all right, like still, it's just like I'm done. Yeah. I need. A, I need something new. Colin. The right. suspense is killing me. <laughs> right, here we we are to find out what we're watching next time. Colin, Colin, Colin. Give me a Colin. Is it a Tom? It's a Tom. I can tell it's a Tom. <sighs> it's a Tom. It's a Tom. But, Tony has seen this one before. Ah! Tony. What was it? The next one we're watching, you've seen before. Sure. The Power of Kroll. Ooh. With the big giant oh, yeah, octopus. Yeah, yeah. A bit of it, yeah. It's written by Bob Holmes, isn't it? Correct. No, usually known as his worst one, right? Nope. No. No, because the Trout and ones, uh, Space Pirates, is usually yeah. the worst. Didn't he co-write those? Nope. Oh. oh. <laughs> oh. And the Crotons as well. Um, but yeah. I guess we'll see you then. Or we might see you in the new who I mean, one. To, I'm to, not sure. to, to be fair though like the likelihood of getting a Tom is very high so I expected it yeah. but it's the fourth one in a row maybe after four at the very least I'm sure it's going to be pulpy fun and not this well from what I've seen of the power of crawl it looks just like a, like a kaiju movie yeah. with some Lovecraftian influences and I'm like I'm down for that and it's Bob Tom Holmes. Baker and yeah. Mary Tam so yeah. and Bob Holmes yeah. so it should be fun Hopefully. Famous last words. <laughs> <laughs> oh, How many episodes? Four. Thank fuck for that. Yeah. I'm happy that we're watching this before the Armageddon Factor. Because mm. at least we might have some... What's the... How many episodes is the Armageddon Factor? Six. But it's... But what I'm saying is at least yeah. we'll have some context of yeah. the heat of time before we step yes. into the Armageddon Factor. Because yes. I have seen the first two episodes of Ryboss Operation, so I do know what the key to time yeah. is. But at least we'll have that before that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. See you. See you then. <laughs>